All right, welcome back, everybody. It has been a minute. The last time we recorded was the 49ers winning the the pre pre game to the championship. The one the one right before the championship. NFC championship. So it is. It's been a minute. We were gonna do a a bit of a recap. Um, this episode is our season recap, as well uh, as gonna title it the real threat of AI takeover, the real takeover of AI, we're going to propose an idea here that when people are talking about, oh, AI is going to take over the world, or they're having that conversation, look, we're going to add a little perspective to that that I don't think a lot of people are, they're missing. They're not talking about it. Um, so we're going to, that's, that's kind of the, the general gist of today. Some little side topics we're going to talk about are the hypnotism that's occurring. I'm going to bring some examples of that that you guys will probably find interesting and relevant. And it will provide that uh, perspective shift that will hopefully allow you to start seeing that. Um, If you're new here, I mean, this stuff isn't for people who don't have eyes to see and and don't have a thirst and a, a quest for truth and and knowledge about them if you're not that type of person you're not going to really follow anything we're saying if you are the first time here um but you are interested in stuff like that you can check us out at bigbrainuniversity.com it's where we have just kind of our hub for our material we have some lessons there and then we have links to um you know our podcast seasons as well So you can check us out there. You can also find some nutrition information and links to Professor Trevor's um, material as well. So have a blast with that. Um, Good to have you here. We're going to talk a little bit about body transformation. I'm about 40 years old, so I think it's kind of interesting the the stuff that I'm going through. Um, Past listeners will find, find some updates here. Fairly interesting. Um, we are going to talk a little bit about, I got a nice, like kind of Zen proverb type of experience to talk about. I, my body's been in a bit of a state of fasting for the last couple of weeks due to a wisdom tooth extraction and then a little bit of a stomach kind of issue that uh, I think I kind of fully found a resolution for. So that is actually really exciting for me um so that all kind of led to you know again my my state of mind kind of being in more of a spiritual tuned place where sometimes the reality you're just you're not quite like paying attention to all the the nuance you're not so distracted you know like i'm able to kind of focus in i'll get into that story a little bit later um we're going to talk about that we're going to talk about the band nirvana a little bit something a very interesting observation came across there with some interesting timing we've got to talk about a couple movies and some ideas that are going to go into uh that are going to entwine with the the real AI takeover idea. Like what's actually occurring there and what is the real threat of AI that we're probably facing? Gonna talk about a little bit of a Twitch meta going on. Uh, It's just, we'll get to it later. And then we just as well start this off and get it over with. We don't have any real updates on Taylor Swift, even though she was part of the NFL season Uh, more than most of us wanted her to be. (laughs) So now that she's gone, we don't have any real need to update anything on her life. Never was interested in any of that shit anyway. What was interesting and still is, is the effect and the, um, uh, that she has on her followers and this just seemingly mass amount of followers. Uh, so that still is interesting and we still do have to kind of consider that when we are you know considering things like biostatistics and algorithms for those new my friend here kevin is former nsa biostatistics and algorithms expert so he brings a lot of that type of expertise to the table where for someone like me 
being educated info security side of things, you can see how our both of our trainings and educations had have quite a parallel between them. So when I first met him and you know years gone past uh, running these ideas past him, you know, conspiracy theories, shape of the earth type of things like that, you know, you know, big time stuff here. You know, what the hell is going on in the world? We weren't really afraid of tackling any subject. When you have, you know, I didn't know he was former, his former NSA at the time, so I didn't know he had any of that training at his disposal. Otherwise, it probably wouldn't have taken so long to get through some of the shit. But when you're someone like me, you never really know how somebody's going to react to some of this information. Like, what, hold on, you're saying that the entire NFL... Possibly the entire NFL or a large portion or at least a very large amount of them are all they all have some fucking computer chip in their brain that's hooked up to a quantum type of computer that's basically running a Madden NFL EA sports type of simulation over the entire field where the players are just basically all synced up to the computer and they're literally not even fucking playing the game. It's a computer simulation that you're watching. The players are just meat bags con controlled by a fucking computer. Just one part of the world. <laughs> People are going to be like, uh, okay, that, that dude's just a little bit fucking nuts. But no, when you actually look at all these pieces of information, when we look at the facts that we have and we look at the patterns that we can collect, uh, along with like just practicing basic common sense, as well as a practice of what uh, we can refer to as information superiority, mm -hmm. which I'd like to talk a little bit about at some point today. Mm -hmm. Just we're going to keep referencing that because I like, I like how that um, sets a tone. And sets up in it for for other examples here. Yeah, that's a decent nutshell to like get us started here. That's what we're going to be talking about today. I'm glad we're that about today. <clears throat> when, if you asked me um, before, I've been like, I told you I'd have to kill you, <laughs> and if I tell you, they're going to have to kill us. And who's they? So, um, yeah. So we have an interesting um, pair here, computer. Expert on um, one side, had some travels, got the world traveler on this other side with the perspective and perception type view of the uh, through the lens looking in. But before I speak of anything, I will speak of, I'll speak of travel sometimes, countries I've visited to, six continents I've been on, but I won't go into detail on what, but I can talk about culture experiences and um, world examples and situations where. Um, um, you know, language barriers type of stuff, how to get through that. And uh, I do not on? speak for the there Department of Defense, nor I do I speak for any government agency. I only speak for myself. Nothing I say on this is verbal and or written in the comments. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed are the speaker's own and do not re represent the views, thoughts, and opinions of the government the material and information worldwide perspective travels presented here is for general information purposes only. You ain't getting nothing out of me about nothing. Ooh, and I say, woo! But I do have a perspective and perception on the world. So I have that advantage. And the information security is a great example. And how you would get into that is uh, what people need to understand. Once you have that, you're ahead of most people in general. <laughs> All right, now something I don't know. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, along with being a little bit fasted, uh, comes a lot of fucking angst. Um, you know, just like losing body weight. You know, kind of being hungry, not being able to eat. It can make me a little bit fucking edgy towards people. So, if we have any comments or sudden rants and outbursts from me today, that's probably why. Um, it's just kind of the nature of how it is. Yeah, so we had a very interesting NFL season. That's mm -hmm. the second Glad season. It's over. The second season that we've done, the first season was kind of incredible. Mm -hmm. I. 80%. The, the story I'll, I'll share with you guys later that's kind of like the spiritual side of the story 
I was using all that last year when we were predicting our bets. I was using like synchronicity, using this this thing I'm going to refer to as the unitary field that consciousness basically exists on, and you it it's a communication type of thing. Like all of our thoughts occurring. Kevin is aware of all of my thoughts occurring, all of my feelings. He's, his, his whole body's a fucking aware of it. All at once. It's connected by something, a field. Like, there's a, there's a medium that that energy has to travel through. And this is going to come up in how this hypnotization is occurring and accomplishing its goal. Along with how this AI, this supercomputer is also trying to simulate the same thing that our consciousness is capable of doing. Things like it explains things like telepathy. It explains it explains everything. it's happening everybody. It's happening. It's not a fucking maybe. It's it's happening and you can experience it all the fucking time. And today or no, it was like yesterday. It's like yesterday that it happened that I'll tell you the story about. So where was I starting there, Kev? Where was I starting? Hmm. Where do I really want to start? Just kind of like, wow, well, we're, we're kind of recapping. I, I used that that frame of mind, that, uh, that ability, that unitary field theory, that consciousness, to pick my bets for the night. I would just put my thoughts out to the atmosphere, and I know that I was going to get a response. And... I was running this test against the theory that these fucking games are already rigged, that the outcome is already pre-decided. And if that is the case, then I should be able to consult the collective consciousness, communicate through this unitary field, right? Now, a collective consciousness would be aware of all the thoughts that have already occurred, so if the game is already fixed, the thoughts would be available to draw upon, and therefore the atmosphere will bring them back to your experience so you can get your answer back. Now, this doesn't this type of experience doesn't occur if you're not in like a, a, a purity mindset and mentality. It doesn't just happen for you. You do there is a trick to it type of thing. But how that exactly works isn't quite the important part. It just should be interesting enough for you all to understand that there is something extra here occurring that we are trying to point out to you and provide perspective of. And we've done this through the last couple seasons of just covering the NFL. The things that have come to fruition are, like I've said, I've been able to hit a very high betting uh, record that was 80% at just base maybe it was 80 percent plus and it was using the synchronicity picks kev went had a had a great season as well the first time he picked the sleeper for the super bowl at the end of the first season we um talked about next season and who our predictions were gonna be kev's like well taylor swift's gonna be at the super bowl halftime that we know for sure so that we kind of already had our premise like we knew she was gonna be involved somehow and then it was a matter, well, if Taylor Swift is going to be there, all this fucking gambling has shifted to be legal. They're just going to do another season where it's like, what's the most profitable fucking season for the NFL right now? It's going to be a Chiefs 49ers type of Super Bowl. And we called that. I, I, we, I haven't gone back to listen to every episode yet to find what episode exactly we said that on. But it was very early on, maybe like week four something like that maybe even week three it wasn't too far i remember you asking me like what do you how do you feel i'm like chiefs niners like that's what we're gonna see so we have a ton we have an entire season now of all of our basic um you know processing the data of our biostatistics and algorithms it's all been enshrined in gold because the NFL fucking said the, they were like, yeah, that's exactly what's going to happen. So, so now you guys are going to – you guys have one, two, three seasons of material from us uh, because the first season we didn't really do NFL, but we did, we did do a, a podcasting like season type of thing. 
so there is there is a bunch of information there but just in the just in the sports podcast the buff brain sports cast mm-hmm. we have now demonstrated to you that there's something extra going on mm-hmm. here just in the way that I've been betting and now we have an entire fucking season where all of Kevin's uh, biostatistics expertise is really exemplified because we talked about all of the little factors that would go into this, all the little check boxes that they wanted to hit, and why? In relation to like all these other things going on in the world and all the other things we've talked about, for us to have come out like to be 97.8 to 100% correct, the only things we technically didn't get correctly is that we thought Taylor Swift was going to perform at halftime. Mm. Which she technically did. She, she might not have been doing music, but she was still there putting on a fucking performance. I sure wouldn't have been there if Taylor wouldn't have been there. She, I'm sure they fucking had her doing something at halftime, like dancing along to the songs. Something, obviously. So it's, you know, whether we were 100%, like we didn't call, you know, Kelsey and her getting together and there being this whole fucking narrative. But once that hit, it was pretty fucking obvious that our original prediction was like, holy shit, they're really going to do this. Yeah, but then the NFL um, pulled the rug out and gave all the money to the betters for the Super Bowl. Like yeah. one of the biggest Super Bowls ever bet, most people won. The season, public won. Yeah. What I did was fade the public. Is what I did for uh, the sports betting, and that wasn't effective. So between all the rigging, the flags, and the refs, and now all the changes coming, and everything else adding up, man, it's like you can use all the knowledge and expertise and what happened in the last year, week and what happened two games ago and yardage this, yardage that. It just comes down to what, when do uh, when do they want to take a big pile of money from the public and when do they want to give a little back or do they want to give a bunch away like Super Bowl? So this next year, everybody keeps betting on a false... False pretense. But have the hope that, well, we won the Super Bowl so we can fucking win all the... I don't know, man. Yep. It's a... Even with these rule changes, we'll Snatch still have the advantage. Because now we'll, now we'll, uh, Mahomes will be even better set up to just run down the stretch at the last play of the game. Just, <laughs> it's just, it's all such a show now, you guys. It's so uh, entertaining. WWE, I mean, I'm so glad the season's yeah. over. My gosh, was it? It was a bit of a painful one to get through. I couldn't get through enough Taylor Swift to uh, focus on football. And even yeah. focus on football, I flags. And... Well, I mean, how fun is a season where you knew how it was going to end right away? I mean, sure, it was kind of, like, enjoyable to an extent. And they for... put the odds so low that you know you weren't going to get a lot of money back, even if you would have bet the Chiefs at 5-1 to one to win the Super Bowl at week three. Chiefs was 5-1 to one all year before Taylor Swift... And then the Niners yeah. were uh, five to one, sometimes six to one, all year long. So those are the two dominating teams. Why well, imagine that? Both in the Super Bowl. There you Everybody go. who bet outside of them lost. All the bill, all the fans, man. The fanboys lost money. Again, we we don't say this. It's so not like, rigged. It's not rigged. <laughs> you all bunch of. We don't we say this to of, stroke uh, our ego. Of, uh, we say this to uh, to really show you that it's like, hey, there, there, there's something going on here, guys, that we need to pay attention to. Um, yeah, yeah, a bunch of negative Nellies. There's bunch no of way negative that, Nancy's there's no, conspiracy theories. There's no theories. way that these athletes would be uh, uh, fixing games. Uh, no. <sighs> yeah. It, it ain't them. It's just who's above them. Yeah. The yeah. Matrix of three. Good luck finding them. Yeah. Why? Why would I need the refs to be uh, in on it when I can just put a computer chip in their brain like the other people and they'll just sync up and then I can make the refs do something so you all just blame them and it's like you'll never fucking know. You might be like, oh yeah, I know it's rigged. The fucking refs do this and that and it's like, yeah, but do, do you really see what's going on? Do you really see it? Can you see the timing? Of these play of these players and and the time like the way they move mm-hmm. like think about things like uh, musicians. We've we've had uh, you know Beyonce has been recorded saying that I got I get hypnotized and the person that goes out on stage is Sasha Fierce. 
like and then Beyonce she's like I could never do that like this is it's they, they refer to it as their like alter ego right wow. and it's like no what happens to them is they got hypnotized and then they can do things that they wouldn't normally be able to do and the way that they can do it now get this y'all I already mentioned this unitary field that consciousness operates on and how everybody's aware of everything all, all at one time whether you are, you know, you're consciously aware of it, like wakingly, most of you are not. But you can, you can learn to be more aware walking of it. Walking dead. Right, you can sink into that. The that working, walking dead. Level of consciousness. The now, sleeping awake. <laughs> I saw one time a hypnotist hypnotize a couple of high school girls. And one of the things that he made them do well, not made them do, but suggested for them to do. He's like, make up your own alien language, <laughs> unknown to anybody except you two. And the two girls just started conversing back and forth with each other. Like, and their body language and responses was like they knew exactly what each other was talking about. Even their tone of voice was like, it just perfectly made sense. It's like you know that those two were having a conversation of some sort that only they actually knew that they were having. And how that occurs, the hypnotism trick is you can manipulate consciousness because of this unitary field. When you understand how it works, yeah, you can make two people make up a language that only they know because they're actually communicating with each other telepathically. It doesn't matter the words that are coming out of their mouth when you understand the thoughts and feelings that are coming from that person. It's like talking to and, a dog. And when you watch the exchange, like dog. you could see their energy was being exchanged in a unitary field type of way. That it wasn't, they weren't responding to the words that each other was saying. They already knew what, what she was, she already knew. Like the moment she was thinking it, the, the other person was aware of it. So it's like, I understand, I know exactly how to respond, and the energy was connected that way. You can see those types of things. Uh, one experience I wrote about in my book was when newborn, uh, not necessarily newborn, but you know what, like fresh newborn, like, but at home, you know, days, weeks after, like newborn baby, just like looking at a guy with like a, you know, quite animated face and like big old beard you know like it's something that a kid would just be like "Ooh, i want to touch and just look at and you know he's just like having this conversation with this baby like just through his eyes and like little sounds and like the guy was like very smart guy and i knew like he's thinking thoughts like to that were like along that purity line that like right thought right action like good pure thoughts for this baby and you could just see the way that the baby was like interacting with it. It was like it, it didn't understand his words, you know, or w what people were saying in the room. It was still in that consciousness state where it was feeling and you, you're like, you're, you just understand. Like because it's all like your thought experience at that time. It's like thoughts and feelings. I remember it as a kid, like I used to, like money and um sexual things like those energies i picked up on because they changed the atmosphere of how people would like talk to each other at first they could be real friendly and like you could sense the energy in the air it was like warm and and safe but then once it was like all right now how much did that cost type of thing you know like oh then then i was like ooh, okay like you bad feeling and then, you know, once that exchange was over, it was like, oh, okay, okay. That's, it's, it's one of those things that, like, now, not to get too deep on that. What they can do with that hypnotism effect, so I wanna, I'll just bring this um, right up to March Madness, where you can, guys, you, you can all see this occurring. Watch a player like Paige Bukers or a, or a Caitlin Clark. Or uh, any of the any of the major ones where they're just why are the, why are these ones all, all like such studs over everybody else? Why do they get all this notoriety and attention from the media and shit like that? Now just just watch the way that that Paige Buchers moves, and you can tell that what what you can see 
you can see her make the correct reads on people where it's like that person's going to go for the shot fake and she knows it or that person's going to do this and she knows it right when they're going to do it because of the unitary field and the consciousness. Now, since she's been hypnotized, she's able to operate, not necessarily wakingly, but her body will respond to the consciousness of other players around here. So as they think something, she'll just respond to it. It's almost like can be compared to a fighting game in a video game, right? Because a lot of people want to say like, this is all a simulation thing, thing too. Well, there's a parallel here. Yeah, absolutely. Now, when you're playing a fighting game, you're dictated by the rules of the coding. So when you see a, a character make an animation, like a, you, you can counter that because you can predict what they're going to do based on their animation. Now, it's the same type of thing when that a lot of times, even when you're playing the video games, it's like you can get in somebody's head and fuck, just like or sort of mess them up. That's really, it's what is occurring. You are aware of what they're thinking at the, at the time. So it's like you can mask your thoughts to deceive somebody. And people who understand this are, are, are very well trained and uh, a capable liars and, and deception artists. That's, that's why you hear about, oh, the, some of the most psychopathic people are the most calm and well-mannered people. And it's like, yeah, that's because they understand how to deceive you. So they're just, they're putting on a certain act because they understand it. It's, 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 this is, it's very interesting stuff, but it's also a very basic concept to just hear it and be like, okay, that can, that's a possibility. And then you can look and apply it to what you what you can see. You can just you can see it. You can see it occurring when, like I said, this podcast, this our content is not for those with with people who don't have eyes to see. Like we can get into talks about like the sky opening up and you know portals opening up, like right at a time of cataclysm where those of us with eyes to see will be able to get through them or. Something will happen, you know. It's just a small example, but it's like, hey, Take the there's there's a lot of there's a lot of spiritual stuff out there that that suggests like, look, you're not going to be able to experience this stuff if your mind is not in tune with these certain frequencies. And one thing I kind of tell Kev is, it's like there this unitary field. It's like there's this channel where it's like you just the right thought, right action, like the the purity channel. The like, it's like. In Donnie Darko, where he's like, what if you could travel in, or in God's channel? Like, you know, God's channel. It's like, well, you know, heaven, like, could be, you know, it can, or a, a, an experience in Nirvana. It's like, I don't know exactly how to put this all into words, which is kind of just a downfall of the English language. But since I just said Nirvana, let's let's move One right lady into... One to another says, I'm lucky to have met you. <laughs> Let's I move right into that example. Care what you say unless it is about so, me. hey, no, um, do you yeah, know what? Do you know what on a con artist on the word con artist? Do you know what the con means in con? When somebody says I'm a con artist, I'm a con yeah, man. Like it's a trick. Like I'm deceiving you. No, right? the word con. Con, yeah. It's in like con air, con a conniving type nope, of thing. Nope. Like a con you. man, con. What conspiracy, con, all the con. Whenever you hear okay. the word C O N, do you know what that means? Maybe. You don't know? Tell me. <laughs> confident. 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 So a con man is just a confident man that thinks he can get away with the crime. A conspiracy is somebody who thinks they have this theory and then get away with it. A con air was a confidence airplane full of criminals that was taking it down. So con. Confidence, confidence. Of that way. There you go. Okay. Y'all learned something. I was thinking about like we so, should talk about how I should, fucking should, English. So if you fill out your so tax stupid. form, what do you do for a living? Confident man. I gotta know like confident that, man. The They'd word. be like, oh, he's a confident man. He's business. I gotta know like the etymology of all these fucking words that everybody uses, and it's like, I if, unless I know the etymology that they're talking about, and they are using the same etymology. Like, we might not. We might use the same word, not even fucking have any clue what each other is talking about. 
I love this language. It's so great. Oh, but the one thing I was going to correct... It has all the words I need to express myself. (laughs) I was going to also correct on Mizu, Mizu soup. It's Mizu is soup. So, hey, give me some Mizu soup. And Mizu is water. So, Mizu. But you would have to say it different. So, I was correcting. I ran that by you. I just want to um, correct on some Japanese. Arigato gozaimasu. Toitashitemashite. All right, so that's what Khan man means. That's your uh, word for the day, Khan. <laughs> In Jeopardy, what does these word mean? They'll be like a contrarian man. Nope, he a Khan man. All right, so I mentioned Nirvana, and I, I've talked about hypnotism enough. I'm going to tell you this one, this one story, not the spiritual part story, but just this one. That all right, so. My stomach thing happened. I'm going to combine stories here. My stomach thing happened where I just, like, I woke up. I I wasn't able to eat enough. COVID. Because I, my wisdom teeth had, like, broken on both sides. So I was like, every time I'd eat, I'd get, like, food stuck in there. Which one would cause, like, some pain and the other, like, so they'd always get stuck. It was like, fuck, man. Eating was such a pain in the ass. I didn't want to do it. You better. Just ate like you got your tongue pierced. Because when I had my tongue pierced at 19... I ate like uh, um, like stuff that you couldn't chew. Just ice cream or something. <laughs> so you need to be on, like, shit. I'm on a liquid diet. You probably didn't think about it at the time, but yeah, that could be an inconvenience, obviously. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get to the wisdom teeth extraction part, but we're not quite there yet. So, I the stomach issue, I actually figured out that if I just if I just drink raw milk, that, that always cures my stomach hunger, and it does it in seconds. Mm-hmm. So I, I'll save like a long story short here, but I think that is the trick to all to like, I don't think I'm like as afraid of stomach hunger anymore where I was like, I was really fretting the wisdom teeth extraction. Like I didn't want to get all four done at once because I was like, that might be like a week where I'm not like able to eat. And with my stomach where I get, I'll get, i get too hungry and then I won't have something that my stomach agrees with to like, and then I'll just, it's like a fucking nightmare to just get the stomach back online. But this time I was like, I'm just gonna try raw milk. Like maybe that'll just do it. And it, it fucking did, it worked. So I was like, shit, well this is no issue anymore. So anyway, that type of thing happened. I figured this out. But it was still like three to four days where I was like, I just wasn't able to eat. And I came over to see Kev. Well, I was coming over to see Kev that day. And, you know, one of the things we'd been talking about was was hypnotism. So it was kind of always like already on our, our plate of one of the things that we talk about. So my mind's mind frame was kind of like, all right, I'm prepping my mind to like, you know, go talk to Kev and let's, you know, what are we going to talk about? Where, where are we moving with this whole big brain university project? All this stuff, right? It's been flowing through my brain. But I'm, I'm going and I'm buying something before at this store. And I, I get up to the checking account or checking counter, the check out counter. And these two kids are standing at the register and the one just blurts out he's like they're hypnotizing the students they're hypnotizing the kids or yeah he's like they're hypnotizing them in school i'm like i'm just like what the fuck is like so i'm, I'm trying to like act normal you know like I'm not show any facial expression like did this fucker just like is he just like talking or like is he just speaking my mind like why the fuck are you saying those words right now kid <laughs> Like, there's a customer right in front of you. Like, wait, you, the, wait it's just the whole thing. I was like, the fuck, man? I'm like, you know, he's the really smartest kid. Or like, what the hell, kid? I knew that I hadn't even, like, eaten, you know, enough. I feel like I was in a, a fasted state. Was so he was right like, or my, wrong, though? You know, my fucking You should have been like, is that true or false, sir? <laughs> yes, sir. It's absolutely true. Well, so and I, it's been, expo- he's exposing it. And it's better on for everybody who just hasn't seen it. When you see it, you can't Dude, not see it. And I, it's terrifying. I thought about, you know, I should go gather some information here. And yeah, see what you gotta I use say. intel. But at the same time, I was gather like, I'm info. fucking avoiding this use situation it your, right now. And use it for your information I'm just, superiority. I'm trying to fucking avoid it, right? Mm-hmm. 
So Gosh, I, I go up to the next lady and like she we go through the thing and all right, I'm out the door. Well, then I go and sit in the car and you know this whole matrix kind of idea. We've been talking about this too because we've been talking about the supercomputer thing for a while. How these players are probably hooked up to it. The first person that drives by in front of me, like, I'm looking at him and his fucking face and head, he's like, he's like twitching a little bit, like every so often, like, like he's like move, like he's got like an itch or I don't know, dude, it's fucking weird. It's like, it's like, like I'm hearing about this hypnotized thing. I'm thinking about the people in the fucking matrix and this person drives along and they're all twitchy and shit. I'm just like, ah. Oh. They're all on Twitch. This yeah, is Twitch and they're twitching. Yeah, and dude. They're, they're not tweakers anymore. They're it's twitchers. Like, it's a it's a those with eyes and ears to eyes to see and ears to hear. Like you'll just the truth just fucking comes to you. They're you driving know? dead. Yeah, twitching, like, but barely life. That's their last life is twitching. Like, I'll tell Before you, they go into a coma and then life surpasses and I gave it my best and have no regrets should be the last words they say. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's like I have a lot more to do and I fucking ran out of time. <laughs> you gotta think about it, bro. Think about the matrix that people don't, they're in it and they, they see it, but then it's like, you got it. Man, there's so many different matrices. That's there's the issue. There's something to it. There Everything really is. Everything has some sort of matrix to it. And, and like I can explain like the matrix of, matrix effect in the, in reality, Every and day. why it's actually like like this sort of odd joke that yeah. the Matrix movie. You know, yeah. it's like kind of this joke on reality because this shit not actually some is dudes occurring. jumping around, doing backflips, and killing everybody. The yeah, it's, real it's, life people walking. And they see what you, they can read what you are. They, and if they, if you, here's how it is like in poker. If you're the, if you're, if you can't spot the sucker in the first hour at the poker table, then you are the sucker. You have to know who the fuck is you're dealing with. And that's just an example. So I get here, I get, I get to Cav's place and and we, we have, I tell him about this, right? So we're talking about it, blah, blah, blah. I go home later on, and it's within like the next like day, day or two, that uh, I I see this movie pop up, and it's Nirvana live at the Paramount, maybe Ooh. whatever it is. One of his last shows. It's the one where they had the stage dancers that had the shirts where it was like it said like boy or girl or Did it, was it the in utero just, background or would have been a different? Do you remember? Uh, not the Amuto row background. So like a bleach or one of the album, or maybe not a background. It was just like a red. I don't know the album, I've but it was seen it before. It was like a live performance. Yeah. I'm sure a lot of people have seen it on YouTube. Like you know, I'm watching it and I'm like, okay, this performance is actually like interesting because at some points it was like, man, Kurt doesn't really look like he's like he's. Like his body language didn't look like he was playing the guitar. I was like, what the fuck is that? That strumming is like just so relaxed. Like he was. He was a and, lot and of heroin kind of, too. But, but I, I, then I was like, okay, I went and listened to the song and I was like, okay, you know, you actually can just do that. But I was like, I really? Like, really? You would, you would pick it that way and like that's the way you would play it at a show? It was just, just kind of weird. It was one of the first things I noticed. Other things were like, I know Dave Grohl is an incredible drummer, but like, <clears throat> I was just noticing like the body movements and stuff were just kind of like, I was like, gosh, it's just so precise, you know, it's just so precise. There's some, they're, they're not, they're not making any human mistakes. No, they're professionals. You know, I've been, I've been, I think Kurt, you know, I think Kurt required perfection. So if you have perfection on heroin. You're probably just another like yeah. matrix soul that's you don't like, even have to blink. You can't. You're not. You can't even comprehend outside of the matrix. When at that point, you're in your own like fucking. Like, and you're feeding off of each other. And you're yeah. speaking your own language, not verbally. Just like a baby. When they see baby, oh that's look right. at he. he they, right. Maybe they can see evil. Maybe they can see good. Maybe they can see something that or they sense. So the baby either laughs, yeah. cries, or is content. Animals are no different. I know That's animal right. owners that are like, he's never sat next to anybody like you. Yeah, oh, that's Or they're like, he always anybody. barks and he, he, was a, he just like got behind. Like, there's something with the sense where yeah. you have some energy yeah. that other people don't have. Yeah. It's no different than you see a celebrity and it's like, holy shit, I know yeah. the guy, but 
that type of energy that you feed off and if you don't have it you got to project it and if you're projecting the wrong way you got to change your way because if a baby and an animal can sense something is off what the fuck can a human unless we'll put you on a polygraph and figure out exactly what hiding yeah. secrets you're hiding right. <laughs> no that's what we're gonna do so anyway to, um that's how that incorporated that matrix and also what you had said earlier about the mm -hmm. energy so so the show is, it keeps going on right and you know, I'll, I'll do things like look for a little, in, you know, uh, I call it a human inconsistency factor where it's like humans, no matter what, at even at the highest level of performance, they'll show some sort of like humanistic error or element to them, right? I'll have, you know, my colleague, she's a detail-oriented person. So I'll, I'll have her come over yeah, to my cubicle and be like, hey, take a, take a look at this disc golfer given the, doing a live interview during this press conference. And one of them looks like her son. So it's like, like even the hair and everything. So I'm like, hey, here's your son. You notice anything wrong? And she's like, is he ever going to blink? <laughs> you know, it's, it's like little shit like that where it's like yeah. even, even <laughs> she can see it. Uh -huh. And she's not like near, you know, it's close to Antarctica as we are. <laughs> okay. So it's like, <laughs> you know, uh, she's a mom and fucking caretaker for her husband. Like, she, you know, she doesn't have fucking time to worry about half the shit that we talk about. So it's like, but but she's detail-oriented enough where it's like, hey, what do you think about this, you mm. know? I call them hidden. Even uh, she's pointing that out. I call out. them uh, hiding, uh, so, hiding conspiracies. One of those. Like, they oh, hide. yeah, yeah. They don't yeah. want to be out, but closet they Closet conspiracists, they right? They don't want to expose because they right. don't. Just like a closet Swifty. Yep. Um, so just drawing correlation to like, you know, why I'm even watching the Nirvana uh, concert live, live show thing production in the first place, why I'm watching it that way. Why, why would I even be paying attention or looking for some of those things? Well, okay, get this. Then what happens, one of the next things I'm just like, I'm like, I'm like these guys are like fucking hypnotized or something, you know? I'm thinking that because it's like, they're just so, per like playing everything so perfectly. And it's like, you just be under so much pressure and I'm like, mm -hmm. God, this is such a good live show, you know? They didn't like, give a fuck. No pressure. And they had they had like these dancers up there and shit and they just weren't really responding to the dancers like mm -hmm. like because it's not normally there. They were just acting like it was so normal too. They're all nonchalant about it. So that was kind of eerie. But so what the bass player does, at the end of the song, he like he walks up to like he puts his hand in this motion where he's like gonna grab a microphone. Like he's walking up to a microphone and he puts his hand up like he's gonna say something. The only problem is there's no fucking microphone or microphone stand in front of him. So it's like he like his like hypnotic hypnotic state kind of like glitched out. Yeah. Or Somebody or, or he zapped. like overrode it somehow he got and it's like he got zapped. <laughs> so then he looks over and he's like, oh, the microphone's over there. <laughs> Like, you know, he's just on yeah. so much heroin when he did yeah. this. <laughs> then he walks over and grabs it and he's like, I've been hypnotized! <laughs> I fucking, I paused it. I was like... <laughs> I'm like, you motherfucker. <laughs> yes, you were. <laughs> and that's what's happening here. Now all your, like, weird dancing and you're out there and you're fucking... Like, you're not wearing any socks and you're just wearing <laughs> shoes and you're all, like, some random gym floor it's like i get it but like now like the way he was playing the bass and like the way kurt was like he would just pop up like at the last second and start singing all like perfectly mm -hmm. it's just like mm -hmm. okay now i fucking see it dude mm -hmm. now i fucking get it i did not see that at the first, if i watched that again that's the first thing that would pop out out of all that that's so interesting how you, and you know what i i i guarantee us because i was i followed that shit when the, even I've live shows before, up to like he died i followed all everything i could find so i probably i have seen that show but i didn't see it at the time what you were talking about unless i would have been thinking about something about it it's now, always something that's it's, just broadened someone's yep. perspective just slightly yep. So but you I, just see yeah. it a certain way, and then you're like, oh, man, I never saw it. Here's a small example, and then I'm going to tell you one more thing. Like, it's like, oh, down at the, at the university, of, the Diamond Mountain University, when I went down to that Buddhist thing in the desert, like that was, um, 
that was one thing that I was able to do there. Gosh dang it, I'm losing my spot because I was I got sidetracked just a little bit. <laughs> dang it. Got hit and unhypnotized. Oh yeah, that's what it was. Down at Diamond Mountain, like did I went into this house and like this this gal this girl was there, but she was like she just she wouldn't even like acknowledge that I was in the fucking house. And it was like everything was dead silent and I'm like look I'm like looking at her just like waiting for her to like break her focus like from this like the head, one of these head guys at this at the monastery that I was at it was university slash monastery at the time and one of these guys was just he would, he was this guy like when I was in this like real focused state of mind it's hard to get you guys all aboard this train like that like you need to read my book to really follow some of this stuff but I, I passed him on the road one day and he did this he did this hand sign where when he was coming up right he did this like like he was trying to catch like he was trying to catch me like cause he, can, he knows how to hypnotize people so he was trying to put like he was trying to like manifest him catching my mind he was trying to catch it while I was driving, right? But see, the interesting thing at this time and during that story, that experience is like when I was driving, I was also like tuning in to like mm-hmm. how I could like yeah. position my fingers and like just to help like keep my mind like focused. Like, yeah. and so I was really like riding like conscious like thought. I was fucking in it, Kev. So when this guy drives by me and I see that, I was like, <laughs> and now it makes more sense to me years later understanding that they were probably hypnotizing people down there because I've seen this effect on people where this where this girl just like couldn't break any focus from this guy like she was just hypnotized and he was standing there looking at me observing these people around him like dude so what the fuck is going on here like why are these people all acting weird and he's just at the center of it seemingly unaffected by it and I'm just like you know, it, it was it was this experience that I was I was like, dude, I I couldn't explain it at the time, but I was like, now that I look back at it, it's these it's this this is what was happening. This is what's going on. This is a, a big secret that um, a lot of little cults, cults. a lot of little fu- you'll see it all in these fucking like cults. Um, monasteries and shit like that, like. Cults. You gotta really be careful with these fucking spiritual go gu- any people who are trying to like entertain you, even Twitch streamers, fucking YouTubers, they understand the hypnotic effect and the hip the the, the hypnotic susceptibility of people. And not all like like I said, with those with eyes to see and eyes to hear, we can just fucking see it. You're not gonna hypnotize me or fucking it's just not gonna happen. I'm too aware of like my own thought process for you to to penetrate that, I wanted to. Oh, I wanted to talk about information superiority right there, just because I just wanted. Your... I wanted to drop the fucking <laughs> that the most righteous hammer you can ever drop, you know. Um, but I wanted... let me tell you about that. We where they was they kind of trapped you, or they kind of like they hypnotized. I'm gonna tell you how the perceptive versus perception I learned even before I left the United States to travel the world. 73 countries, six continents, can't confirm Antarctica, but it's on the map. So if you see Antarctica, it's there, believe it. (laughs) But with that being said, I learned languages in countries that I just picked up the language. So I, I had to use energy, I had to use hypnotism, but their hypnotism is because they're a, a major, I'm the minority. So when I would go into like Japan, my first trip to Japan, everybody had a different look, everybody had a different idea, they had a different perception, perspective, is this an American here to hurt us? So I had to use that. So when you, I, had, I dated um, European, I dated Asian, I dated um, South American. Uh, different languages in Japan. She didn't speak, my first girl didn't speak any English. I spoke no Japanese. We formed a relationship without knowing each other's language and it was almost, I would say, a perfect 
relationship until it just got to the point where I, we started aggressively learning. But she had to learn proper English and I had to teach her proper English and I barely knew proper English because it was all been messed up in the transition of the years of what we've been, just different words added. But I had to learn Japanese the proper way and that's kind of how I learned all the languages that I needed to throughout the world and that's kind of how what you were telling about that. Um, you go to a tribe, you go to a place where they're not familiar with you, you don't speak maybe their language, and then they're like, hey, welcome, or they're gonna just gonna size you up and try to maybe hypnotize you in a way that, I don't know, like if let's say I walk in, let's say I, I get off a plane and I'm in I, I, Israel and ISIS a terrorists are there. They're gonna look at me automatically like, oh, you're a threat, we're gonna kill you, take you. But a cult would be like, hey, let's try to bring him in, help him out, see what he has to offer. Even a pickup artist is uh, almost a hypnotist in oh some God. ways. It's like, you just, I just need to convince you that I care enough about you for till I get you into bed. And then, no. you know, that's... Well, that's kind of how it works with different that, languages. A I had soft, to, very I had soft to use nonverbal and verbal to yeah. romance and relationships in European countries that I'm like, are we... Like, it was just, it was, Europe, Europe is more of an aggressive. They'll fucking take you and fucking, you know, ready to roll, whatever. Asia is more conservative. Asia was more like, you had to build up. You had to like, I'm like, you know, I like build that. Versus, hey, in America, you can go fucking a bar and find somebody. Anyway, South America is yeah. a little more, a little more open, but a little more conservative. So I just look at the demographics of the world. And Antarctica, I don't know. Let's, let's try to find anybody out there, Antarctica, let us know what's going on. I'd be curious. I want to I wanna try what the amazing food is on Antarctica. And Anthony Bourdain passed away, so he, <laughs> I'm sure it was on his bucket list. But he always said he, he wants to uh, get it to Antarctica somehow. So let's, let's uh, I don't know. Get a contingency plan put together. Put it on paper. <laughs> Actually, don't put it on paper. <laughs> Put it encrypted. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Put it in crypto, please. Like, so yeah. there you go. Perception versus perspective. Information superi superiority, um, whether it's electronics or it, uh, um, human, which is the human talking to talking or talking into a cast when people hear it, or reading. There's always information superiority. So very important in life. People who don't have it until it's too late. Yep. It's so. Mm, mm, mm. Let's, talk, let's, just, let's talk about the Twitch meta. There's a new Twitch meta that. Okay, like some people will get banned for just saying sexual things or even like showing an object that might look sexual in some way. They'll get banned. But now, like these, these girls can go on camera now, in a bikini. The new meta is a clear chair seat, and then they do a camera that shoots up from the ground, basically just right up their crotch. So the girl's just sitting there in a bikini, like a thong bikini, and you're just l looking up at this clear chair. It's like. And they have a camera like on their face too. So they'll just sit there and like play a video game or like talk to chat just sitting there on this clear chair where you can just, you can see everything. It's uh... I want to tell you on an Apple iPhone, you know how it clicks and, and, you, and it doesn't click when you take a picture in, in the United States. If you ever take an Apple iPhone, it, oh. if it has a US patent iPhone, it doesn't click when you take it a picture. Have a shutter I device. think now it does because of the technology, but before it never did. Because it, I bought an a Apple iPhone in Japan, and they had a thing where men were going around with like these little oh like, they would they would, in, in, in trains because yeah. when you're in a train, you're so close. when you're in a subway, right. when you're in any environment, elevators, you're compiled. So the clicks, they would sell them online. This is before like all this shit that's going on with, you know, you can just log on. I'm talking like 2006, to the first iPhone type find, but they were having a big policy in Japan, headlines. iPhone could be taking um, unauthorized pictures, please. Um, and then what they did was they added the click version. So now 
in, I, the iPhone that I have from Japan that still just uses like a Wi-Fi. If I take a picture, it goes click, yeah. and it, it makes a sound to oh, alert. Yeah. So it, that's how Japan, and it was big in Asia. Those phones were not designed. In the United States, never had a the, never had an issue with that. So the upskirt photo. I wanted to I wanted to uh, express that in a different cultural aspect on. And uh, now it's just effortlessly to get out, and there it is. Yeah. Like, or it was an illegal operation that they were just putting, you know, chicks in skirts in Japan. Yeah. Schoolgirl outfits. That's all they, you know, would wear, skirts. That was Japan's the... a very seductive, very seductive nation. It's just, it's very um, cool, man. I don't know how the, I can put so many different words on that, but let's just say <laughs> it ain't America, but it's whew, interesting. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That was a big deal. A lot of people are getting in trouble. They're arresting, I don't know, people just on a train. The early days of sextortion, huh? Like big time. the earliest yeah. forms, yeah. And if girl, if she found her picture on the internet, she'd be so embarrassed, she wouldn't want to report. Oh, dude, some of the girls I saw when I was out in the West Coast, it was, like, when I'd go in the city and see someone, some of them would just leave their, like, window curtains just, like, open. I'm like, you do realize that there's probably fucking th- at least three guys that know that you live here and fucking probably watch you daily with, like, binoculars and shit, and you just, like, leave the windows open when we're, like, fooling around. Oh, the satellites are watching. I'm like, <laughs> I'm just like, why don't you just close the fucking blinds? Like, no, they watch the 50 shades of fuck off. Yeah. It's shades of something. It's like, probably something seductive. Well, they probably say, like, oh, I don't care. Oh, I don't nope. care. But then you see all these movies where it's like, or or you hear about, you know, them, then they'll be mad if they get, ex, you know, extorted for, or they're treated a certain way that, oh, I saw a fucking, this porn video of you online, like, and now nope. I'm going to fire you. And they're like, well, Revenge. I don't know, these... Revenge These young porn. girls, they just don't understand. Like, I watched this movie called Hunted, where it was about uh, high school football teams in a in you know around the area in their division or conference or whatever. They all had this app called Hunted, and they would like post bounties for certain for nudes of certain girls or like you know pictures of them <clears throat> that risque pictures, any sort of them. Mm. And then you know it ends up one of the girls. They, they figure it out, and one of the girls gets really, like... Well, they all, like, feel hurt, and they want, you know, the boys punished, and this and that. And it just brings in this question where it's like, you know, you sent these photos over a fucking internet. What did you think was going to happen? Yeah. Oh, I just trusted that he wouldn't give them to anybody. Well, it's not that you gave them to him. It's that you, you sent them through the internet. <laughs> like... Now that data exists on a lot of different intermediary devices that you never even fucking knew about that were collecting your data in caches and metadata and shit. So it's like now there's just copies of that shit for people who can get it. So, Extortion. So it's like the, 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 the main of these movies is like, oh, the little girl was, you know, she ended up trying to kill herself. And it's like you probably hear and see examples of that shit happening in real life now mm-hmm. because, oh – some girl like sent her nudes to some guy, some football player who was tricking her, and then it was just a like sextortion. Yeah, yeah. it was just a sextortion to embarrass her in front of the class. It was for uh, it was for uh, now her reputation. It was for uh, it was for characteristic um, in, um, characteristic slandering. Yeah, I mean you're going to fucking destroy somebody's reputation. Yeah, and the easiest way is with evidence, not what you know. It's what you can prove. It's not the truth. It's the facts. Court of law doesn't give a fuck. They want the facts. They don't give a fuck about the truth. Do you intend to tell the whole truth? Should we intend to tell the whole facts? <laughs> truth and facts, two different things. It's, it's it's true. But that's the um But that's 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 a that's a problem. They need to educate them. Oh, you gonna blame the parents? I don't know. Blame somebody. But then on the contrary, say that she was just some chick that wanted to show her tits and get popular with the guys. Yeah. Well, now all of a sudden, they send it to somebody, and their father finds out. Now she's there goes she's, your scholarship. Now, now she's a child. Now she's a child. Now she's on the sex offender list because she <laughs> is fifteen, and she's ch- a transfer whatever the child porn. Yeah. And then um, now we're talking about 
she was trying to benefit from something that she had, which was illegal, or people were going to use somebody's image to sabotage and be like, okay, last resolve is kill yourself, and they're fucking, they're 15, 16, well, my life's over. Or the other one is where the, the sextortionists want for straight money. Oh, well, your dad's a fucking principal? We're going to fucking take your pitch. We're going to fucking ruin his life, so we're going to ruin yours first. We want $10,000. Not 15. You know, it's funny as I heard the, the, the you know? Cruel Intentions movie. Yeah. I heard that song. I went to the gym before up here. Mm. I heard that song. It was like one of the songs that came on. I was like, no fucking way. What song <laughs> I, like, is that? I, it's, Sucker love is heaven sent. Oh, da, 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 da. And there's nothing else to do. Every me and every you. Da, da, da. Yeah, that song. So um, that's, that's the issue, the problem. And it even goes up the scale all the way up to even whatever. It's a problem. <laughs> People <laughs> don't understand what, how fucking serious an issue it is for, yeah. with, with, with the consequences. And man. Yeah, no, they don't. They, I, don't. And it, it they brings just, us think, into, they just uh, think it's all Fugazi and everything's gone. Oh, just like somebody just vanished? Well, that just doesn't vanish. Like, that, there's no just vanishing. That's an, that's an impossible word. It's made up. It's a Fugazi. Vanished is some sort of something behind it. Just like if somebody in an interrogation, oh, your, your wife and kids went missing. They just vanished. That's on your test. That's on your statement. You told police officers they just vanished. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. you know, like that kind of like, I don't get it, man. It just doesn't make any sense. So that's what it is. And it's, uh, oh man, I don't know what the. The untech, even tech parents, man, them kids gonna be out smart. They'll get burner phone off somebody, eighteen, pay them, fucking have a phone and do whatever the hell they want. Yeah, that's the beauty of that. And then they get caught with that. Now they're really, I don't know, it's slippery slope. That's unfortunate because if you are a tech savvy and all of a sudden you you know your kid has a, you know, it's like you are full on panic mode. Like there's only one other person who has a phone number and it's an ex girlfriend of his and she says fuck off. You ain't getting shit from me. I want fucking something from you, you cocks. You fucking ruined my life. See how you can set? You could just, man, I could create a fucking syndicate of just fucking just destroying people's lives with technology that they use every day in an innocent way that they use, but fuck your shit. You know, yeah. man, and that, you know what? I don't know. If there's people that would, there's unethical and there's ethical. Take your shot. You got the red and the blue side, fucking rubber meets the road. Which one is it? trying to formulate what I was going to say here, trying to remember everything. Yeah, so that was an odd Twitch meta. Twitch. An odd Twitch Showing meta. Showing tits and, and seeing bikinis asses and watching, I don't know. Fuck, you can go to the uh, Venetian. They got a fucking European dude fucking section if you want to go see tits and ass. <laughs> For real. And you're in Venetian at Las Vegas. There's three sections. Family, friends, no alcohol. Family, friends, alcohol. And oh, the nude that's section. what it was. Okay, okay. Okay, so I've been thinking about this lately. Like this shift we've seen. It used to be, you know, pre-COVID and then post-COVID is kind of where we really see a big <clears throat> difference. Especially for the young kids. When I was going to school in that time and before that, it used to be that like sexual innuendos and sexuality was something that we all acknowledged, but it was supposed to be something that wasn't so broadcasted. You put that back up. You and, ain't going out like that. And well, well, this, mom went and I mean, out like, like that. Well, she's fucking thirty-one years old. You gonna put on something else? Well, and I mean, I mean, like in a sexuality, like identity too. You know, like oh yeah, maybe like oh I'm straight or I'm this or, or I'm yeah. that or this or well, that. Well, think about that. think about don't ask, don't tell to enter the government sector. Don't ask, don't tell. When people join the government sector, that they were, you, but the nonverbal, you could tell people. 
in a situation that you knew, but they couldn't tell you, but you knew nonverbal. That's how, you know what, that language. Right. The hypnotist yeah. says, speak two fucking different languages like aliens. Okay. Yeah. Put you in a situation, don't ask, don't tell. If that's one example of how that transition after all that, and it started becoming a, um, after 9-11, well, and now, after, uh, up to COVID. Yep, and now it's like, now the youth is basically being presented this opposite idea where, no, broadcast your sexuality at the rooftops and make everything about that. And make your entire identity about that, and everybody is supposed to acknowledge and know that you are some like cisgender queer, and that it, if they don't even address you as that, like that's that's a problem, and you should be offended. It's it's the, this this obvious trick where it's like we're saying with the sextortion is yep. that's only going to be used against you yep. in every single scenario. Oh. Like, it's never going to be like, oh, yeah, remember fucking Vanessa? She's a cisgender queer. Like, you're never, it's, that's only going to be leave a bad mark on their, on their history. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, maybe not to other cisgender queers or people who want to broadcast that, but that's going to be a very small minority in the future because nobody fucking enjoys that. That's like, okay, well good to know now you just kind of spoiled it for everybody and all the sexual jokes you make are going to be kind of fucking weird because now we all know and it's like you this is your identity you know it's just it's like a piano player who's really good at playing piano or a basketball player who really who's really good at playing basketball and that's all they fucking talk about is how good they are at playing basketball that's what that's like like NBA now the point, the bigger point I wanted to make is like we can see this shift where it's like they're just setting these kids up to like just extort each other, mm-hmm. like use all of that information against each other instead of teaching them that you no, know, there's kind of like a hidden language here that's like you know when you become they don't want to expose it because they can't because they have a structure yeah. they have to teach and if they don't teach that structure, yeah. it, they get fired. It's a pyramid structure that is a failure. Even teachers that teach know it. They fucking know yeah. that half the shit is irrelevant and it's just a wait we're fucking all just wasting their time. And it's a it's a hypnotizing kind of a, the youth, guys. Yeah, it. yeah, exactly. That's what I'm kinda of calling attention to. The youth like gone hypnotized. The hypnotizing of the youth. They ain't going wild. The youth ain't wild anymore. They hypnotized. They're giving them this this premise uh, to this to build their base around and then they're gonna manipulate the shit out of it. Yep. And use it to just sucker them into everything. I mean, we could use, we could make a soft references to, you know, some religions. Like I was saying, even at the Buddhist monastery, there was fucking hypnotism being taken, being practiced. Where it was like, that's, you know, that's kind of nefarious. Like, you don't fucking do that, man. Mm-hmm. Like, not, not to people who are like, there. those people, a lot of them were just there to like, seek truth and enlightenment. That's what I was fucking there for. That's what I showed up for. And when that's not what they were really doing there it was like well that's you know i didn't come here to learn from you guys those things i had my own teacher come along with me and then he left so then it was like my own teacher type of thing and like i said i figured out this like what i could describe as a unitary field in this conversation that takes place through consciousness back and forth with the universe that you can dial into and you can start to ver- you can once you get that down you you have a source of information superiority that trumps all this other shit. Biden's it. It's a, it's kind of this kind of a great spot to really almost kind of round off this point that I was making earlier, where that was really that ability and that reality were, were really exemplified and kind of like enshrined in gold in this past season because I've explained these things so many times and Kev's explained these things so many times and then it all actually happened it's just it's kind of, this is all it's it's always kind of surreal the the state and experience or the state of mind and experience that you get to be in when your eyes are capable of, of fucking seeing and your ears are capable of hearing and you pra- actually practice at it like you can really accomplish some really cool things and experience some things in life where it's like, oh shit, man. 
You put your mind to it. You the rest of society anything. is fucking like Doc Brown woo, said that future. You, man. you put your mind to it, you can accomplish anything. Like fucking hypnotized. Like I always say, man, psychosis via mass hypnosis. Psychosis, mass hypnosis. Mm-hmm. I'd drive down the fucking road. I'd be like, psychosis, mass hypnosis. You're all fucking retarded. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like just on a rant, dude. Yeah. I do when nobody's just on the road. On a fucking rant, you know. I like, do it at the electric poles. I'm every, mad at this, is mad at, this I'm, whole thing. Everybody I'm mad at the kinetic cycle. energy driving this force, <laughs> and I don't trust it. <laughs> like I gotta go out of parallel just to avoid even Fuck, yelling man. in that situation to uh, even get avoided. So, absolutely, dude. Sometimes I really have to correct my own thoughts do, do, because do I'll people, go off on do, hating everybody. Do people? Uh, do, do people know uh, if? if if some, somebody is psychosis, or do they know that they are psychosis and they don't give a fuck, or do they not know and everybody else doesn't know and nobody really knows what the fuck with the psychosis and hypnosis together? But if you just take one of them, which is psychosis, that's a very popular word in the psychology vocabulary. It's one of the very parallel words when it comes to manic depression, manic disorders. Yeah. Borderline serial killer. If I you would add define... three tiers into it. Fire. Bedwetting and um, animal torture were the three key elements that uh, that's usually a one of the tiers. So if you add psychosis, that's that's always a word that's added into any of those. So they say Jeffrey Dahmer did all this, but he had mass. High, I mean, psychosis and ev- it's you can't have it without psychosis. It's like one of those you can't have a, a drunk driver without alcohol. You can't have a you know, an overdose without a drug. So the psychosis is one of those, it's very common. So what do people yeah. think when they're like, well, maybe, how do they know? I see, I, I would define the psychosis as any form of behavior resulting um, from a hypnotic effect that is unfavorable towards the collective. What's, what's, not, what's a, a prisoner got sentenced for something? What's an example of... I'm not pers- but um, that's a textbook you know, question. Or I'm asking a, <laughs> an example that people could be like, oh yeah, like this person went in and shot up a store for no reason. Okay, just- I mean, I, 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 would, I could say that my, one of my psychoses is I, I have to drive to work every day and that uses fuel that's toxic to the air that we breathe and since we live in an enclosed system, I'm technically poisoning oh. the very existence that I'm in. So, so that that's fucking psychotic. Why so, would I do that? So I'd make it that's tricky. stuck like I I have to pr- I'm in a state of psychosis when I do that, even though I am acknowledging but that could it be every good. time. That could be I'm good and it. bad. I just don't think that I think that well, word is well, more the, directed as always a the negative. Psychosis is like is more along the lines when it's like they don't recognize that it's happening. Now, because I'm not doing it in a psychotic manner, but but a lot of people they just like they just oh oh that's just the way it is. We just drive for like use fuel, you know, and that's the best kind of fuel. And technology is at the top because they they're hypnotized by the television, so that's their information superiority. What if somebody doesn't have the um, all that nonsense going in? They still well, when like, take that away. When Send them to quiet. a foreign country and they have nothing on TV and they gotta fucking go around and do something. I, that was always an experiment that the, they would put people in in, ter- in areas where they have to just they have no like shit going on that's interrupting their life. Like their problem was their environment, their living, and their location. Like if they change that, their their psychosis would go away. But some people just have it as a trait. So yeah. it's one of those words. It could be valuable. I think poker players, a lot of them are very psychotic because it's like, Jesus, are you fucking kidding me? The, you know, the outs, the outs, yeah. the, oh my God, can you believe, you know, like, it's, that's... It's kind of, it's like, like a loose word, like, oh, well, everybody But that person probably just had to, like, I don't give a fuck, I'm just going to do it, and everybody would be like, that's crazy, that's psychotic, that's psychotic, like, yeah. what's he thinking, that's out of, that's irrational, but that's normal to somebody. Maybe maybe psychosis is people that have power and maybe information security. Well, so they they, there's cr- different levels they of create, psychosis, you know. Like, like if you look at the serial are, killer, like full on it probably starts out they're really smart. They just had a different way of thinking, but it was it turned into something bigger, like putting dead heads in a freezer. Man. Like it started out 
Like is, that's a little bit psycho. <laughs> see, there you go. <laughs> Might that's be suffering from the psychosis there. Yeah, but that's You're the showing whole, signs like, of that. Like, like I would say that signs of like psychosis, like it's a disease. It's like psychosis is just like the actions themselves. Like that's how I would define it. I know like psychology field might define it a little bit differently, but I, I define it as a result of the thought process. And I think a lot of the psychology field just has this idea that you're just fucked up and like there's something wrong with you and it's like no you really just have to dig down and identify the thought process that's occurring maybe the and education system's to blame they, for a, I think a lot of that up. that is it's let's say you take five six year olds and all of a sudden five years later it's like whoa like yeah. it's something you know like maybe it's something in something that just some people that are uh, well, different genetics that just like all of a sudden they're hypnotized into like another parallel of I don't well, there I don't agree with to learning about grammar and English. I want to fucking learn math and yeah. that's it. No, you're gonna be punished. And then it goes down to like you're like yeah. you're almost like anarchy against like the system that's designed to put people in a normal but people end up going normal to either that good yeah. side or I don't know. It's a parallel of that injustice of, okay, I got information on you, but you have nothing back, so I trump what you are. Now you feel like shit, and you got to get dig yourself out of a hole. And now you become psychotic, and you go, like, why did they kill the neighbor's cat? Because they fucking lost their mind. That's a, that's ex obviously a, a, an example that probably some neighbors bark, bark neighbor, dogs bark, and the guy gets a bat and says, I told that fucking neighbor six times, one more time, and he just, right. like... Fuck no. Yeah, that's a little psychotic. But he may have thought about it one time. Then, but that's a, a real life example of how that could lead into. That's maybe, somewhat more emotional on intelligence. Maybe, but, but it's like, what the fuck? I see. I don't, here's a, a contrast I'll draw. Is like, in my mind, I can, and like just the ex the idea and existence of this, of like a utopian type society where everybody is capable of practicing right thought and right action and they're they're aware of it at all times yeah, like, I don't, that, I, I, so it's like all of their thoughts and I, they're all connected in the unitary field they're all working like together almost like kind of like an ant colony right mm -hmm. just like everybody has their role they're all doing it for the for the good of everybody else and they all stick out and protect each other mm -hmm. it's like pure utopian community and that that possibility does exist. That is what like a heaven sort of place is like, and similar other places like that, where it's more utopian than this current fucking psychosis, mass hypnosis, <laughs> clown fucking world that we're currently living in. What a mess! Where we can't even hear ourselves think because we got oh. all these fucking electronic devices oh. making all these high pitch frequencies in the background. So, oh, it's scary you know? when you hear nothing though. You oh, yeah, when you, you really got to hear yourself think. Yeah, if you start hearing that, you're like, oh, shit, the power's been out for fucking three days. When now you what? can start hearing yourself think, you, like, actually can start sorting out your thoughts. And that's one of the, like, really major things I did at the monastery was, like, I, I just figured out, like, what's occurring in my head? Like, where are these thoughts coming from? Like, where are they, you know, all these thoughts and feelings? I just figured it out. Like, I can't tell you all the technical details of how that all works, but... I can tell you how, like, it occurs, like, I can walk through it, but let's, uh, migrate on from that. I think we've covered enough on that for now. I do want to get into that, the last part of the story, where I was at the park and into the Zen proverb. But I kind of want that to be last. So let's touch last. The last things I want to say on this, this a this the real AI takeover. Now we've covered enough information here on hypnotism, supercomputer chips in these players' brains. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you name ball it, whatever. Control. We didn't even talk about the ball, ball yeah, control. Yeah, ball control We'd already been, it, it, That's like, already obvious. Everybody knows that. We don't need to discuss that. But yeah. this is a different level yeah. of uh, what we're going to be seeing. Now, EA what, sports. Yeah, what I want to say here is like, every, every, we always hear this, oh, AI is going to take over everything or 
this threat of AI taking over things and and you know controlling the world and leading a humanity into this fucking Terminator like uh, future it's future right where the machines take over it's like well guys what 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 have we been describing to you what have we seen take place in the last three years since we've been providing content for you what have we seen take place and at, at, after these two seasons of sports casting, where it's like the NFL is like this, like we just said, it's like a fucking puppet show of a supercomputer playing a goddamn Madden game. Now, just blow that up, y'all. Blow it up, zoom out, and apply that theory into like all these other fucking places, politics, all these other world governments. Like all these fucking governments are probably a unitary government. It's probably all one system that they figured out, hey, we're going to have the Chinese government, the American government, this government, that government, and then they play out this fucking history because you know what would be able to write a script like that? Something like a fucking supercomputer or a quantum computer that's existed for fucking millions of years. Mm -hmm. They have the technology to do that, so they just... They hook people up to it or clones up to it, whatever the fuck they are. Real humans, they probably can put chips in their brains... Fucking reptilian humans, they put chips in their brains too. Whatever the fuck it is, y'all, we don't, we can't prove every, any, really anything to you, but we can show it and point it out. All of that points to the, the AI takeover that you all are fearing is gonna happen is already fucking here. It's already here. It already happened. They've probably reset this fucking society multiple times. Like with, what, a full fucking mud floods? Oh, some pole shift event where the, where the ground turns to plasma in some areas? Or ice chunks, cryometers fall off the fucking... The, the firmaments, whatever the fuck is going on up there? And, like, cause a flood in these areas? Like, we don't know, you guys, but, like, the real AI fucking takeover, it's already happened. We're already battling that shit. And no, I can't say it's like, yes, this is 100% occurring. I can prove it to you, but it's like, uh, look at it. Look at all of the fucking details. Look at all the facts of the matter here. Obviously, the truth is not the facts. Facts is not the truth, but we can get a pretty good glimpse of the truth. And now when we now take that and when I combine something, I've demonstrated this for you. I've explained this enough to you all that this information superiority this this conversation with the universe this unitary field of consciousness where everything is fucking related can and aware of all each other now expand that to heaven expand that beyond the firmament and imagine that the galactic community is also practicing consciousness and aware of your thoughts and feelings right now as you think them every fucking time you want you're worried about the nsa Cracking in on your privacy. Let's tell you about the unitary field. Let's tell you about the fucking galactic community. Because they can see and hear everything you fucking do. I wrote about experiences Space in my book Force. that really like... Space Force! That really Space like Force. highlight that and kind of how I like was clued into that. You know, Space a message Force. from the great beyond was given to me. And I'm here sharing it with you all. And I know that it, some of this might sound off or crazy to you all, especially if it's the first time you hear it. But if you <laughs> go and take a look at the documentation that we've provided, you'll find that it's actually these theories, these ideas, they're getting confirmed and verified and then sent through synchronicities back through us we've we've explained that even uh, i mentioned it earlier just through the fucking using synchronicity to to bet which team was going to win or the over under was going to hit at a at a rate of like 80% plus that wasn't dumb luck or just chance i even explained some some of the most of the time i explained what happened and how you i actually read the sign that i got i'd say hey i got this sign from the universe this happened I interpreted it this way. I had 80% accuracy on in into translating that on to the sports games. So, so AI taking over everything is like, like, <laughs> like I'm saying like like you, you'll see channels like I'll call out Jake the Asshole's channel here. 
you'll see him cover all this fakery in the NFL, but he won't ever mention a fucking AI supercomputer running the whole thing. Yeah. Like, I'm we've sure detailed it and shown, he's even shown examples yeah. in his own fucking plays. So it's like, yeah. he either knows what's going on, or he's plugged into the fucking computer and it's not letting him talk about it. Shout out to Jake. I want to say about <laughs> yeah. that AI, an example was uh, when I was living in Tucson, Arizona, before, right before 9-11. Think about this, right when Y after Y two K happened, before nine eleven. So in that time span, computers were going crazy and the world was going chaos. It was all going to end, and then the internet was obviously there. And I was I was introduced to emails, but when I was living out in uh, so uh, Catalina foothills, right oh, down yeah. there in the Catalina Mountains, the Catalina Tucson, Wild Arizona, mixer. and uh, U of A was with with the um, in the area, I I, uh, I met some old old guys, a guy, guy named Jim, and, and he was telling this is when the internet was, like I said, was being invented, emails being sent. He said, I'm never going to touch those emails. The internet's going to control everything. Think about AI, it's going to control everything. We already saw the internet in such a short phase control everything. He, I said, that's not possible. What do you mean? He's like, it's going to know everything. I'm not messing with those things. It's going to... He even said something to the fact like our tr travel's gonna go like we're gonna rely on. He was like a, one of those conspiracy. I didn't know a conspiracy theorist was until I met this guy at such young age. He's like, don't believe everything. Like he was one of those anti-government. He hated. He's like, this is all fraud and like I'm like, damn old old guy. <laughs> old dude. So saw right check this it. out. So I'm telling you they exist. I um I left for a bit, came back to they Tucson, right. Arizona. And that would have been August of 2001. And uh, we were just hanging out and, and he was just talking. I said, hey, did you get, the, did you get your Dell? I said, did you get a Dell computer yet? Because I remember having these Dell box delivered. And like he'd say, is that another one of those fucking time machines? <laughs> oh, <laughs> we'd smoke cigarettes and drink and beer at 8 in the morning. He was one of those guys who'd get Never up like Clint Eastwood, on, uh, Clint Eastwood on a Grand Torino is an example of this guy. Just an old guy. I was okay. renting out the house next door, and um, uh, so he was telling them how everything. And then that September, when those planes crashed into the building, that's Jeez. when he uh, like disappeared and like fucking packed up everything and left town. <laughs> I was like, never saw him again. Oh my god! And travel was even shut down. We're set like you couldn't get out of the city. So he was packing up everything and said, "Fuck this shit, y'all have a good life. I'm going." And he left. He was one of those. He's like, I survived in the mountains before all this chaos. And this was like right around 2000. He was just one of those guys that I'm like, fuck, did he have a bunker somewhere? Did he know? Like, holy shit. Because when I think about when 9-11 happened, this guy was a full-on paranoid maniac with the internet being invented. And then, of course, he wanted to blame the system on... So that's an example of somebody saying... It's no different. AI was there then. They corrected your yeah. wording. Yeah. It does everything for you in a fashion that makes it easy. Yes, there's no privacy, but who gives a fuck? If you have something to hide that's so important that, that's going to do something against our United States of America, I say go find them. Because for every 100, if there's just one, I, they, I don't give a fuck. They don't get, I'm cheating on my wife and cheating on my girlfriend. People have that as their, there's a public private secret life. And that secret life is secrets that you never would ever tell anybody. Or you would build a relationship where you could tell, but it's not a danger to uh, national security for an example. So that's where that privacy. So AI is just like, bam, it, it, it's amazing technology, but I really think it's advancing at such a pace that if you took somebody from a tribal community that's down in the tribes that lives off the land and that's just like how they live, they just, they're like old school, live on fucking land and maybe have like humanitarian resources, just check on them, learn from them. Um, the Peace Corps is an example where you can go and live in other countries and you just like hang out with tribes and they, they, may, they don't know anything. Put them in the United, just drop them in and see what they do. They would be like full on. And that's just like, Oh man, I'd be, I'd be terrifying to take somebody like that. Sir, like, what do you fucking do? You can trade places with them and adapt, but you were like going so they would not know what the fuck is. They would be too many light. It, they would fall on panic mode. Jeez, I can fathom it. It would be an experiment. I don't think they would want to do with the government just to bring fucking 
that's not, see how it is? Look at a guy, he packed up and left. I mean, the AI, you're not gonna get away from it. The only way to get away from anything, it's gonna be inconvenient and good fucking luck in this day and age. Where the fuck, there's, there's cameras. You're not getting away with shit. There's evidence. You're it's fucked. That reminds me of a guy I met when I was down doing the Buddhist monastery thing. He was like the first guy I talked to when I left the monastery, the first one. And I was in such a fucking like heightened emotional and spiritual state that it was like there. I don't know if there might have been like there might have been few people in existence that could have like spoke to me. (laughs) <laughs> in a way that like this guy was able to speak and he was one of those guys those old guys like you're saying man like uh-huh. he just didn't trust the government he was nope. ex-navy like this special guy, ops this guy navy. was from vietnam this guy he told was... me they were on ships out in the ocean that were sending off signals into space one day they told them just stopped they were like the earth is in a transparent part of space that's what they told him. It didn't make any sense, really, right? Mm. It's like, what? So the Earth is in a space that, like, you can, it's like transparent, like, you can see through it? What? And what have we been talking about today, y'all? Like, if, like, the shape of the Earth thing, like, the galactic community, we're saying they can see and fucking hear you, everything you do and think. It's because if you flip the shape of the Earth, you were taught as a globe being on the outside, flip it out, flip it around. You're, there, you're on the inside and the universe star the yoke at the center all charged with like electromagnetic energy and whatever pure light and whatever you know gives existence this to this place if if heaven and other place and there's life inside of the celestial sphere that's in the center of this place it would make more sense why we're all connected in consciousness through this unitary field. If we're not flying through fucking space all willy fucking nilly, <laughs> you know, by the seat of our pants around on the fuck outside of a ball. It just, it makes way more sense to be this, this inside-ness thing. So, and it makes sense it. with, what was this guy saying? We're in a transparent part of space. That yeah. was 2000, when you, the year changed 2000, internet took over. It's the year 20, I'm going to say 2020 when Space Force was invented. The year 2020, Space Force was invented, which yeah. had already probably been in place. It's just now they put a platform. But, so, so think about that. In 20 years, Internet, AI, Siri was already out. Fucking Siri has been out for yeah. years. It's like, it's just... And all of a sudden, we're just here. But now, like, but now the AI is ultimately controlling every control. And, and people have been Your shocked and, and vehicles, with things like COVID, things COVID, like 9-11. They've been 9/11. shocked and traumatized. Yes. It's classic fucking mass hypnosis yes. techniques on a population. Yeah. And when people can start, they, you can zoom out and you, can, you guys can start to see that perspective. Like here's one. They tell it. They taught us the Pledge of Allegiance to the Republic for which it stands. One day, and it's like they taught us it was a democracy in the same fucking classroom. But you said the Pledge of Allegiance. So you said it's a republic. I pledge allegiance to the Republic. But yet they taught us it's a democracy, and you, you got to vote. That's your job. That's what they told. And it was a fraud. All that money fraud. And when you're a they kid, you, you just you're shocked by it. You're, you get Everybody, hypnotized by the, the way sued. that it is, and all the all the adults are going along with it. So it's all like, the, all the public as a kid, schools. you just you just go. All along the public with schools it. should be sued for misconduct. No. I mean, I always knew at a level, but at some level, I always fucking Fraud. knew that everything everybody was doing was fucking wrong, Fraud. and it was fucked up. And then when I got out of college the first time and all that shit happened and like I get kicked out and fucking I'm like, hold up, universe, what the fuck is going on here? Because I've never done wrong to fucking really anybody. Like I'm a good person trying to seek the fucking truth. Like God, what the fuck is going on? I demanded answers. I drew a fucking line in the sand, you know? And hey, the universe ever since that point was like, oh. Glad to hear you're listening finally. Paying some little more attention. 
<laughs> Ever You're since then, man. It's the been... universe uh, contacted me on so many different levels and ways like that. Like when, uh, you know, I I was applying for some stuff and I hit, there's some box I checked on this little... Kev's story is fucking crazy because it took place like not necessarily at the same time but sort of similar time frames and he was down in Arizona mm-hmm. at one of the nearest cities to where this monastery is so it's kind of yeah. like Kevin and I both went to school in the same place you and, and, and somehow came out of it to gain like intelligence training like yeah. he worked for an intelligence community mm-hmm. and I basically I was like I tapped into this unitary field thing this that I was explaining to you and connected with this galactic community and it's kind of like been working for an intelligence agency that's not really on the books but is on all the books <laughs> and so mm-hmm. it's the parallels here are just very interesting and the even um, when I first met Kev like I would I kind of you know, got to talking to him. I'm like, you know, you spend any time around me, Kevin, you, we start talking like these synchronicities and shit. And he would always kind of, he kind of, I think that's what happened is you kind of made reference to like, man, sometimes these shit will just happen where it's like, I was just talking about it and this, mm-hmm. and I'm like, dude, like, I'll, I'll, <coughs> I'll talk about some shit and you're going to see the echo come through what like happening on the television you'll see the synchronicity like basically pop into existence to be like hey yeah hello here i am here to verify that what you're talking about is true yeah. and there's a collective community a galactic community that's help trying to help us mm-hmm. get out of this fucking hellhole that or, we're in or keep if people trapped in the hellhole and only the percentage can fucking see their way out just like the fly yeah. in the window that fucking first yeah. analogy the wide open door all oh, the crabs in the bucket might, for so for so for your social network crabs in the bucket no different it's yeah. not, it, it could be it's how you perceive it versus you percept it perspective <laughs> that's how that uh works but my yeah. come to fruition was um you had to finish that no, no, yeah. was um yeah i was i was uh had some college going on and I'm like, oh, man, I gotta fucking do, I gotta do something. And I uh, got into the government for a bit, like wanted to do some college. Um, What's it, military? You went, yeah, you went was, military it was first. Air Force yeah. originally, Air Force. Went through all the basic, man, what a what an interest. Now that was pre, that was pre-internet, pre-9-11, pre-2000. So all I did was, hey, guys said, you want your college paid for? Just yeah. like do, do a, uh, Sign up, but I didn't. I was like, I, I said, I'll do whatever. And they said, All right, you can work in the legal system. So I was like, just processing legal papers, and it's like paralegal. Mm. And then there's other jobs where um, I was kind of open jobs where I didn't have a committed job. So they were in a transition where, like, I would, um, like, uh, what was some of the other things? Court marshals, when people would get in trouble, I had to like go sit and do like bailiff duty. All rise. And I'm just like this little airman in a, in a uniform. And so I did like two and a half years. And I'm like, well, fuck, I don't like fucking shining my shoes and I don't want to cut my hair. I don't like being really told what to do, but I manage it. And I got enough where they said, okay, just finish out this and then apply for some stuff if you want to. And I said, okay. So college, I was like, put college off to the side. Let me apply with just my little government that I had a secret clearance and just to get in to verify I was good for the government at the time. And I had to start committing to something. And I said, well, let me get on there. So I went like TSA, let me see in the area. Let me work at TSA and get my, or um, what was another one I applied for? Uh, I applied for um, like a, uh, Boeing was another company. I was oh, like, yeah. let me see uh, something with Boeing. Maybe Defense they need some for analysis or information, um, not technology per se, because the computers, I wasn't really into that when that was all transitioning. I was more just trying to get the basics of college and figure out like what I really wanted to do. And biostatistics and algorithms was my key to this advancement. Just like I said, when the computer, I said, there's going to be technology. So let me get my foot in there. And then, um, so I'm applying on this application. And there's a box that says, have you ever 
been a police officer? Have you ever served in the Coast Guard? Have you ever served in the Armed Forces? So I click that, and it says, do you have an active secu uh, secret clearance? And that's just a clearance where you get into like a postal service, any FedEx, uh, teaching, yeah. any of those jobs, yeah. police officers, you gotta get a little bit more, but those type of jobs, yeah. I just had a basic, just so basic I clicked the box yeah, here, yeah. and then it said, um, this box showed up, and it said, you may qualify for other government positions, can we put your application on hold, and someone will reach out to you, and back then there was no like cell phones, basically you had a, I had a home phone with an answering machine, and then with caller ID, and then I had a, like a little, uh, like a little pager they had, and then I had a, a flip phone. And the flip phone was just your basic, like a flip phone. It was just cool. <laughs> and they, it, it was nothing fancy. So I um, I click okay, and um, I think it was like two days later, I get a phone call and it was from uh, Virginia area code. And I really didn't know what Virginia area code was at the time. But I knew it was East Coast. I'm just like, because back then it wasn't like a spoof number. It was more yeah. just like, so I picked it up and this lady on the phone and she goes, um, we received your application and um, we'd like to uh, interview you for other opportunities in the government sector. And I said, what is it? And she's like, well, we have to fly you out and do it. Because back then there was no Zoom. It was like, so she verified some stuff and I verified and then we can like, okay, I thought it was a prank call at first. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck is this? So she goes, um, can you come out for an interview? And, and I said, well, I've got to get permission. So I got permission and I flew out to a uh, DC area. And back then they had to, there was no itinerary. So you couldn't just print out like United Airlines fucking book my ticket. So she's like, we'll book an airline ticket for you. Um, hotel and um, back then it wasn't Uber but it was like a car service that would drive you around in that area because so anyway a long story short about this is um, I said okay and then I went out there and there was a bunch of other people and I was wearing U of A flip-flops and uh, shorts coming from me <laughs> coming from Tucson so I flew out there and other people were like suits and some people were just like, I'm like, we're, I'm like, what's going on here? We all knew we were there for something. Kev's like, we were all there the for something. I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> it's what they And I knew but before I got, I thought it was a prank clause because she says, we're going to, we're going to, uh, um, overnight you, um, a paper ticket. And, uh, when you get in, you just check in the hotel and, and under your name and then bam, further instructions from there. So I get there next day. Go there, sit around, your name gets called, and the door opens, and I entered um, the door, and the rest is history. <laughs> I entered the door, and I'm, um, I'm still um, in the door. Yeah, nice. <laughs> but anyway, that's how uh, most, most people that have ever been in this situation, it's some sort of form. It might have changed now. It might just be a simple Zoom call, do it over the phone. Sometimes they'll fly to location if they got multiple interviews, but that's... Um, that's how my start was into the world of traveling and also uh, doing some really cool things, seeing some really cool things, seeing a lot of cultures, um, doing everything I wanted to do, world travel. I said I wanted to see the world and I'm like, I saw 78 countries, yeah. 78 countries, 78. That's, um, that's, that's like <laughs> airline pilots are the only other ones, but usually they have direct like five different flights. Yeah. They don't hit countries like, um, Kyrgyzstan. They don't hit countries like uh, Syria. They all those. I've been in the coldest locations in the world, and I've also been in the hottest locations. So that is my interview um, process. And I really thought, like, man, I, I thought it was a joke. I'm like, well, and this this was. Uh, I was like, man, this is this is something. Something's going on. Yeah. Something in the algorithms. Then when I click that box, like, put me in some sort of like, and they just like I fit something, yeah. and I put um like because I was taking uh. Japanese at the time. I just wanted to learn some Japanese because I always thought it'd be cool to go to Tokyo. And I was just taking ba basic Japanese in the college as an elective language course. Well, sure as shit, my, I can say my first place I went to was South Korea, but then I went to Japan. So I had all this information and I, I was ahead of the curve with the language because yeah, I had to learn languages in some of these countries. And uh, 
Yeah. So sounds fun. It's that's fun. how uh, that was a uh, yeah. That's how it is, man. And no, I, I don't know anything about the earth and if it's flat or round. <laughs> <laughs> that's one question I didn't ask. But they said, so tell us, what are your what are the three priorities in the world? <laughs> and I'm like, well, so and then a lot of uh, a lot of uh, um, psychological stuff. They ask you a lot of psychological, like any type of you go in for an interview for a heart, like anything. Polygraph, I can kind of take polygraphs, full body, full like. Back then there was no internet, so it would, I mean, the questions for a full polygraph were like, what's your secret life like? We're gonna pull some secrets out of you. Oh, have you, like now these days, you get on a polygraph, it would be like, have you ever, like let's say you're under investigation for like, uh, talking to underage girls, like you're just flagged and like, they're just like, he's a predator, then they get on a polygraph and it's like, holy shit, just got real, but, um, a full spectrum polygraph is very terrifying just because it's normal to be nervous about okay. polygraphs. I but if you're not weird. if you're not nervous was I, I learned so much from polygraphs that I, I ultimately wanted to be a polygrapher and sit and do and and because I knew the the psychology behind it. Because it's information superiority is all the polygrapher. The fucking the person getting interrogated or questioned for a job has no that information superiority is all that's how this works and that's why it's so uncomfortable to be even interrogated or questioned about hey have you ever like stolen anything well if you say no that's a lie now you're like can we trust you with can we trust you with information can we trust you to not hit the nuke button and blow up the fucking world I mean what kind of level can we trust you so. Anybody that's ever done that, been in the process, knows what I'm talking about. And like I said, when I door open and they called my name, that was my um, adventure into uh, something that, man, I have no regrets and I do it all again. That's very interesting. Yeah. It, uh, it's so if anybody ever wants to get into something that's interesting, go get you like a, a secret clearance. Go work yeah. in the post office for you. Do something to get you a clap, to get you a clearance. And then once you hit that job application, whether you're going to do something, then you will, the algorithms will click you up and they'll find out, Oh, he, yeah. he likes languages. He likes, wants to travel the world. And then you match up. It's like, it's like that, uh, the 20, the, um, what do you call it when you're on a dating site and the algorithms match up and like you match like seven out of the eight characteristics and, that's the same thing with the jobs. And anybody with a, a top secret is, uh, and mine was an SCI also, which was like, it's very, very, uh, very rare, but it was just one of those, um, I, right place at the right time. Yeah. I wasn't any smarter than anybody else. I just had, did something that had put me out there. And uh, yep. yeah, right that's place, it. right time, right actions, man. Yeah. Right thought, right actions yep. lead you to a, a right place. Yep. That sets me up to uh, kind of envision the closing here. Um, not that we're going to close right now, but um, I still have a story to tell. But speaking of the the nervous feeling, that sets me up to go into the the story about the the dentist because like my wisdom teeth had to come out. I was at a situation where I couldn't eat enough because like it just I hated eating because it was always a pain in the ass like I said earlier right so the wisdom teeth had to come out but like prior to you know I'm asking around a little bit doing a little bit of uh, research like trying to figure out you know how painful is this gonna be you know are am I gonna be pres like have to have prescribed drugs afterwards? Am I getting some like an oxycotton script or Ooh, what's, pop you know, some, pop what some the fuck? Cottons. Get some perks. Yeah, perk it up. We used like, to call pop popping the popping the perks. I was worried that I was gonna be <laughs> in pain, but they were gonna give me like hydrocodone, which Ooh. just makes me mad. Mm -hmm. Hydrocodone's like, a hydrocodone's anti uh, anxiety. I mean, you get fucking mad. Uh, it's I I, I hear it. You it, the pain is, but it's. Okay. Yeah, like for I think UFC moment, fighters take it before they fight. For a moment, it's like, oh yeah, this no, is okay. But then it's like, uh, no, this sucks, and now I hate everything. It, uh, yeah, I didn't. I'm not not a hydrocodone fan. So yeah, I hear you. Buddy. I was I was really I was nervous, but 
you know, then everybody was telling me, like, no, 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 you, you're not getting them surgically removed. And, like, they only have, like, a Tylenol ibuprofen yeah. rotation for you afterwards. And Give you some ibu, give you some Motrin. I, 800 milligram, you'll be fine. Woman had a baby standing up. She didn't need any of I, I, You know, well, and I, I, I didn't know that they are going to have to give me, like, shots, like, in the mouth, too. So I just, I fucking hate that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of nervous, you know, like, you know, I just have that anxiety. I think I would be less anxious to take a polygraph, Kev, like a full fucking polygraph Ooh. than I would be to take dental if, if, work done. If, if you are, if you're a difference, if you are in a polygraph for a job and you have things to hide that won't um, hurt the government or yeah. the, the national security. If I was or hiding money, something, but yeah, if you are I'd probably a poly- be pretty fucking if nervous. If you're in a polygraph for an, an interrogation <laughs> on, I go missing and you're the last person to see me, but I told you where I was going, I'm like, don't you fucking tell anybody regardless. <laughs> you're fucking failing that polygraph, son. You ain't, you are not getting out of that fucking office right. until you tell in them that where scenario, Cap You yeah. are fucking... But I didn't, you yep. know, that wasn't yeah. on the table so the that's first a, time so I people think of polygraph. I can pass that easily. You got to look at the perspective. You got to look at the two ways. I just, one I, of them I think is I your rubber meets the road, and the yeah. other one is fucking freedom to uh, responsible for fucking whatever whatever's needed. Yeah, <laughs> I suppose if, I, needed, if I had something to hide, then but yes, anyway, that's I where would the poly dental work. work but I, okay, so yeah, I, I, I was kind of using you, that more to segue. But you, segue had, into, but you uh, had the you had the autonomic nerves, yeah, the anxiety that you couldn't control. That a lot of times they give a little Valium an hour before they, a procedure. Um, I had but, some nitros, laughing okay. gas. Which, you know, oh. just kind of calmed me down, but I was still kind of on edge because yeah. I was like, I just, I didn't know what it was going to be like. Yep. I didn't know what to expect. I was really just more more worried about the after part, mm-hmm. like the recovery. Yeah, because sometimes they, oh man, I... Like, yeah, like I was worried they'd have a problem, you know, like he couldn't get it all cleaned out. Like I didn't know if he had to cut, like oh. my gums open or something. I just, I just didn't know. Like I didn't realize that the most uncomfortable part of it or painful part of it was just going to be the two shots in the roof of my mouth mm-hmm. and that was just most uncomfortable spot part when he like actually pushes the plunger in and it, like you can feel it kind of like ah it's like cocaine yeah and I, then, mean, I mean i've heard if that's what people what say that's... people are like it's like on blow i'm like Oh wow! If that's what that feels like, no wonder why people are. Uh, Once un- that's un- over, then yeah, <laughs> you know, he goes back, he pokes your thing, and he's no. like, "Can you feel that? No. no, feel this side? No." Then he just gets in there and takes the tooth out. You don't fucking feel anything. It's like easy peasy. Yep, and easy. Yep. So I had that done, and it it's taken a while for the one on the right side to like just not be sensitive so, to where that I can like just eat and like fill both sides of my cheek and chew without like worrying that there's going to be pain so like chew without apprehension right they also said no smoking weed yeah they did say no smoking but that, I mean probably that not cigarettes but, <laughs> but I was weed. like uh, uh yeah right Fuck that's off. not gonna fucking <laughs> happen like I'm gonna be smoking a ton of fucking weed just to like you're like you better give me something to put me the fuck out <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm awake I'm fucking <laughs> Tell me, like, I, don't I think like it's because of the air. I think it's more of the like cigarette that. smoke than like car, like yeah. the germ smoke. But. Well, and I think it's because the cigarettes you have to suck harder yeah. too. Like yeah. uh, a pipe, or cigars, a pipe you, know, you don't have to create yeah. that sucking, so you're not using the the yeah. muscles there to like yeah. reopen that. Yeah. And you can just put gauze back. That's what the gal told me. She's like, well, just put gauze just, back here. No that's problem. pretty terrifying for people. I can I can imagine being terrified just at that. Like, yeah. Fuck, man. Besides. Getting surgery and being put under, it's more like this. I'm awake and I'm alert and I'm like, what the yeah. fuck's going on here? Yeah. What if this doctor's having a bad day? I used to think about those type of scenarios. Right. But on a flight from Narita to o- 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 um, O'Hara, 14 and a half hours on a flight, I'm just like, what if these pilots are just having the bad fucking? <laughs> They're just like, I'm, I'm done. Taking the fucking plane yeah, down. You gotta have a. Process, I always had that like. Process. I always had thoughts. that like. What's what's going on here? What you know? But I it, I had to get that out of my head. And after the fucking fourteenth flight of Narita to O'Hara or or um to um. Bangkok to uh, LAX or not LAX but you know the East Coast uh, Washington D.C. or Newark or Georgia. Yeah. Oh man, just uh. It, 
Yeah, but anyway, yeah. the, the dental chair is a little bit more because it's a yeah. You know, I just I haven't had dental work done before. I haven't I haven't had nitros before, so mm-hmm. I didn't know how it's gonna feel afterwards, all that type of thing. Um, so that that all went actually really easily, and I only took two ibuprofen afterwards, and I was like, that was good. I was just like, if this is all the pain that I'm gonna have, oh, fuck, this is way easier than I thought it was gonna be. I should have got the bottom two taken out as well, but you know, hindsight twenty twenty, and at the time, like I said, I didn't I didn't know that I could just drink raw milk to keep the hunger pain off, so I could just go on a basically a raw milk fast until my my sockets healed um so it's been like kind of about another week after i wasn't able to eat from the sickness thing and then i came and talked to kev about the hypnotic thing so at that point i was already a week into basically a fast where my mind was like i'm i'm in like this i can drop into that spiritual focus just like fucking that you know like i can get into a long deep thought really fucking quickly Especially when you're in this fasted state, it's just it's weird. Anyway, you gotta fast for blood work too, so but that's a little bit different. Yeah, I ain't focus on that. I'm just but if I'm focusing on it for something else, then I'm kind of worried. And, yeah. Well, I'm glad you survived the dentist. The dentist is one of the most terrifying, but it's yeah. one one of the places. If, if you, I, I remember being over in uh, Cambodia and I had some tooth pain, Oof. and I was there for I don't know 14 plus days, we'll say yeah. at that time. And over in, in the a dental, over in those nations, you don't need to. You, there, there's doctor and pharmacies everywhere in those countries, whether they're legit or not. There's tattoo places. There's everything you can think of, pharmacies, and medical. So there's these tents set up, and they're all in the streets. And you just walk in, and, and you tell them what's going on, and they can fucking fix you in like a half an hour. They make a phone call. So I went to an actual hospital in Cambodia. And, just had a little uh, chip going on and they fixed it. Back then, it was just no different than it is today. But it was like I had to pay the bill and then I got reimbursed later on. It's one of those where you're just, unless it's a major surgery. But this was like, um, I want to say when I said and done, like 20 US dollars. <laughs> Whoa. Like the pills, I didn't need any pills or anything. Wow. But that's like how overseas care is um, very that. cheap. But I wouldn't want to be there to get like a fucking kitty fly me back in the fucking States. tooth pulled or something. Nah, yeah. I, the dental care over there, honestly, because it's just something they, I don't know. I was it's just like we just overpay so much that we expect, but they over there they just do it a little bit. I don't know how to explain it. I, it was the only time I had a. But I, I mean, I if I ever know. wanted to get anything over there, like fucking. Like, Shit, the pharmacies? What do you have? Um, this? Oh, well, what is it? Oh, it's a fucking Percocet, you know? <laughs> Whatever. And that was before all this fentanyl came along, all the pills. And... Yeah. So anyway, that's my, um, you could, yeah, over there and, and overseas. Like, you don't go, to, there's just doctors everywhere. Like, fucking need an IV? Get an IV. Here's two U.S. dollars. And... I don't know. That's how I, just everywhere, everywhere was like that. It seemed in Japan, not so much Japan, but uh, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, yeah. Laos. Kampu so Ka, Kampu Ka, Kampu Ka. That's what all the girls say on the street in, in um, uh, Kampu Ka. They say, you Kampu Ka, white boy, you Kampu Ka, <laughs> so Adi Ka, so Ka. <laughs> the girls, it's like how they know. It's like, hey, and they have signs holding that say beer fucking 25, um, <laughs> whatever, bot, 30 bot, fucking, now it's, it's the U.S. dollar is pretty equal over there. But back then, jeez, man. Fuck. <laughs> So yeah. So I was so yeah, but like yesterday I, I was at the park and like now it's been two weeks basically since cause the right side it just didn't it took a while for it to heal. Like if I was like not for it to heal, but like t- to not be so sensitive. Like to where I could like chew food on that side. Today is like the first day that I'm finally like, okay, now I can I can kind of like really eat more now. I can focus on like now expanding my stomach again. But 
so I'm two weeks into this like sort of fasted spiritual like mm-hmm. state now. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting at the park yesterday and I hit a real nice hit out of a bowl. Just I'm so I'm chilling, just all the noise kind of went away, but you know the inner monologue is still kind of noisy. Like I'm still fucking like upset with the world and why it is the way it is. So I'm still, I'm still having to like purify. You gotta my, go see seventy fucking three countries, brother. <laughs> you gotta see the world then, and you're gonna come back and love America. Every time I came well, back, I, mean, I said it's so nice. Well, to be back that's in that's America. part of the reason. It's like we you know, over here have it. so much negativity in America and arguments. Bro, you go to a third world country and see people fucking living on, like, do you see the world yeah. there? Not what's on the movies, not what's on the internet in life. You understand when you touch back in America. Every time I came back, no matter, I, I yeah. came back. I said, it's so good to be back in America. People that live in sure. America live in this fucking boxes, little fucking uh, yeah. matrixes. Yeah. And if they go to work, they just come back. It's so good to be back home. I have taken people when I, uh, when I would fly O'Hara, I'd go back to Tokyo and I'd bring like two people that were going on vacation. We just happened to meet up, be on the flight talking. And after two weeks, I said, how was the trip? Oh, so good to be back. I always never heard anybody, I wish I want to move there. Yeah. Never, ever. Same thing in the United States. So you're coming at it from an angle of you can't control what's going on in the matrix of this. But I tell you what, man, I'm fucking true. I kind of just look at things so different uh, yeah, now yeah. because of the fact. And it doesn't take 73 countries. You could go fucking one country and see how, uh, man, it's I, it's nice, so nice. To have, it, Germany doesn't have air conditioning. I'm telling you, it, for two months, it's fucking miserable in certain areas. They, I don't know how they live. I lived there for... Uh, four years and then a couple other European locations but every one of them no AC but I, and then when I come back I'm like man it's so good to have AC oh it's so good to have hot water it's so good to have water yeah. I mean there was times where there's countries where there's no fuck I mean man <laughs> yeah and I always said I, I, in like I always said I'm always going to take for granted like fucking bottled water and just like different I always said because oh, yeah. the situations I depended so much on our convenience that it was like life or death in a situation mm-hmm. and I'm like man America is not a bad place no. it's just full yeah. of, of, of hypnotism like you'd said but it's gotten out of control yeah and it's getting worse and worse and worse yeah. in in um we have too many too many sheeple sides and too many divided sides and too many they don't know where they are, sides. So I'm, um, so I'm sitting there, you know, I'm purifying those thoughts, like bring, you know, just always. That's kind of a constant thing. But I kind of start to focus in on like it's a windy day, you know, and I start to look at the trees. <clears throat> Not like, you know, it was, it was windy enough where it's like you could kind of see like the the wind, like you know. There's a little bit of a like a shimmer on the on the air, and you can just kind of see it. Or if you like relax your eyes, so I was just kind of like you know catching the flow, just you know getting in the zone, just focusing in, feeling the wind, like just telling you, just like sinking down in it, just like getting in the flow, calming your mind, getting to that meditative like mind state where it's like, okay, I can just. And I got to boy, like, I kind of relaxed my eyes, and like instead of focusing on the trees in the wind, like then I could looked at the trunks of them and seen that they're, they're just standing still, you know. But the tops of them are like moving, but they're still still being still. So it's like stillness in motion. And then I relaxed my eyes a little bit and you could like kind of just see more of the wind just like this big you know sheet of wind I'm kind of focusing like there's this all this atmosphere just whooshing by that I just can't really see but it, you know and I take for granted that it's all like you know there's like a bunch of energy between me and that and it's all like matter and it's just being whooshed right through you know and so then like something catches my eye 
down by the trunks of the trees. It's this 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 shape. It looks like an S. Mm. So I was like, well, I was just thinking about stillness and motion, and then I, you know, I see the next like over. There's like a T, and then it's like you could see it, like the forest just kind of like draws my attention to like these things to be like, okay, yep, you've sunk in. You're in that state of mind where it's like you can you can think something and we'll shoot it back to you and you can your attention can be diverted to these things so like i see the word still mm. like written in the forest it's like oh shit man i've never seen it that way and i come and sit here all the time and i've seen that shape but i've never just like really you know but so then it was like i recognize myself in that state of mind because i've done this so many times i understand how it works i was like this is usually when i'm i'm approaching like a revelation state of mind like a some sort of epiphany and so i just kind of kept going with it you know kept purifying the thoughts you know just kept going and then the next kind of thing was like like i saw like the face like what looked like the face on this tree where it was like i the thought and feeling in my head though was like you know that's the spirit of the tree like the tree has a spirit and they're all connected and their energy and consciousness is connected to yours through the unitary field like everything and your consciousness is always all aware of itself like all of the blades of grass like all of the life it's all connected and it was like just one of this like sort of zen proverbish moment went through my head where it's like can you see the faces of the trees like can you walk in like anywhere and just like you can look at a tree and like you can sort of see the spirit of the tree like you can look at it and think like you can have this conversation this continuing on conversation like oh look oh, this fucking weirdo he's talking to trees and stuff and it's, and it's like man if you have any fucking clue what's really going on with consciousness and your thoughts and your feelings and how it connects to everything you're not even living you're fucking in the matrix like just existing you're you're the result of ai programming in this ai driven society the ai takeover that we're fucking talking about because all of your thoughts and actions are pretty much driven by the say even if you're just playing a video game all of it's it's dictated by numbers it's dictated by code so you are only ever having an experience inside of a coded atmosphere it's like yeah you know it's not quite that simple obviously but it's like i can easily make that uh statement about your behavior and be like look it's, it matches the pattern of all this you're not you're you're basically acting like you're inside uh, i'm just going a little too far with the explanation there but I think I've the been, point has been made. It's like, this is I, the real AI takeover that we're all doing. I have seen some AI, sir, that uh, it's pretty elaborate, but it's getting and beyond I, the realm of comprehension. I See, I don't know, Kev, that this is something that it's like, it's not quite the AI, like, takeover where they think AI becomes conscious and and takes over and goes evil on the world. It's like, no, AI is being used by something that can sort of almost manipulate it like it can, like similar to how the unitary field and collective consciousness works. It's like they're trying to simulate a technology, like a heavenly technology and replicate it here on earth through this fucking internet and shit like that. Oh man, that's, I, so it's like the AI can kind of be programmed to carry out the the wants and needs and and uh, patterns and code that whatever sort of entity or you know maybe it's a big dragon that fucking thought all this shit up. Taylor it's Swift like, becomes the dragon. It's it's you know yeah the big yeah, dragon yeah. fireball yeah Taylor, Travis yeah. Scott fire show exactly the world comes to a fucking end. Ta and the, the Taylor is. Yes, Taybot is the shape, the shape shifted dragon. Taybot. <laughs> I have been in a, a skiff that programmed the AI. Have you ever, have you ever been in a, in a skiff before? <laughs> a skiff. You know what a skiff is? Oh yeah, probably, probably. It's but, a sensitive compartmentalized information facility. 
Oh, no, no. It's, no, it's, I've never it's been It's just a building. It, it's, um... So many acronyms. I know. But they, uh... Um... Well, I mean, technically, they, yes. They, they, you, know, you want to say, I mean, like... Well, they... Because what are we talking? Are we talking collective consciousness here? No, no. Like, the, the, <laughs> what I want to say was that the, the carment... 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 <laughs> How do you call it? Compartmentalized. What they're using AI in the in our in the world of um, the oh. Sheepoville, yeah, is they're carbon compartmentalized. Like they're they're yeah, taking absolutely. everything else out and yeah. they're just putting it all together. Yeah, like they have divisions. Just like they do inside Certain of layers. a what they do inside of like a Absolute a corporate loop, building, like a, a building that's designed just for the collect information on, and that's how it is mm -hmm. now. It's getting to the point where, I mean, fucking kids, man, you ain't going to grow up and know what the real struggles are. Like, You're going to have no fucking privacy. You are going to be microchip fucking. You have no control. You are going to be so fucking programmed that you're going to look back and be like, holy shit, yeah. you guys, you guys were using cell phones like six years ago. Yeah. That's how fast this shit's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. So the comment, that's what I meant about the, if you mm -hmm. just take that and that's what the... Yeah. That's it, man. Yeah, you just apply the same type of pattern really on, this, on, on different levels and they do this, the, the, it's, it perpetuates itself, man. Once yeah. they get like people just hypnotized enough to, to carry out the psychosis, basically doing things against, the, against their own good... Uh, I mean, you, you have the society that we have right now. Yeah, and that's... Uh, Free energy, just taking and putting in a fucking... Behind a paywall. Yeah. It's, you know, all the... Launder the money. The little things. That we've, we've talked about this so many times before, how the kids are being programmed by these... You know, they're being raised by things like Taylor Swift and the internet and these, and her tech, e these and technological her devices. Words. And all of it is... All of the technology is basically <clears throat> suggesting the ideas to the kids that their parents don't know what the fuck they're talking about. Yeah. They don't understand them. But the, technolo the technological society, the LGBT, everybody's inclusive, all inclusive, uh, that society does recognize and accept them. And it, at the same time, it's corralling and hurting, fencing in the subject matter and uh, that people are willing to think about because if you tell somebody something that's uh, to think about something that goes against their belief system they won't want to do it that's how you keep people boxed in very easily Christianity is a great example because uh, you can pick any religion but Christianity is a great one because it's prominent in the US here where we are where it's you know, like in the Philippines Overseas, yeah. I'm gonna tell you, Germany, very, like, very traditional, like, religion. Yeah. Old, they're, they're, but they're like old, like, they're fucking churches. Europe is, for Just, sure. It's real, like, <clears throat> but um, America, yeah. it's, it's, let's just say this, besides Islam and, and um, Buddhism, which Jap Japan is uh, culturally that, um, in English, overseas, and Christianity religion are go hand in hand. It's yeah. like every, most everybody knows about Christian religion overseas. Yeah. Then most of the people know sure. some form of English, whether it's five words or they just yeah. know. That's how yep. our world is controlled by the fucking. Yep. Just think about that. That's and how it is. The cross is worldwide. That's it, man. That's and then you got other avenues where you got the you, know, you got the you got the different religions that are just like extreme. Is tight, and then you yep. got the uh, you can Buddhism. stifle innovative thinking. Then I, you can the take all the stuff I said earlier. Christianity is the earlier. most commercialized. Also, yeah. I remember yeah. Bibles in hotels in oh, um, man. in, other, in, in countries in like Singapore. There'd be like a religious Bible. One, one of the Singapore. biggest money laundering schemes in the. I mean, fucking that's world. all. I remember every. Remember how you go to a hotel, you open a thing, and there's always a Bible. Now they're not, nice. obviously, but back then it was just like worldwide. Those it's fuckers get Bible. reprinted all the time, too. These smell musty. We got to get new ones. Yeah, like they got Bibles in their own languages, and I just knew it was the Bible. And yeah. I'm like, I knew the first four words was that in that language, but it was in a different, like, yeah. you know, their fucking dialect. And I 
unless it was wording, it was tough to read the symbols unless Japanese. It should, yeah. Well, yeah. Japanese oh, reads Japanese to... reads up down for their symbol. So like, oh. if you look at when you look at somebody, you read left to right. Yeah. We read left to right. I read the TVs left to right. I read writing left to right. I read, you know, left to right on driving. Right. Their eyes are trained left to right. Yeah. But in Japan, in Asian countries, they go up down. Like they ah. read from your forehead to your nose to your lips to your chin. Ah. So when we look at each other, she would be up like, and I'm going this way. Oh, interesting. That's how the bi- bi- biometrics of, of human psychology for facial expressions <laughs> goes. And other, in other countries, oh, they read right, this right. way. In India, some of them read uh, right to left. So they'll look at you. And I remember always, that's one trick that we always saw is in a, it's natural, always. Left to right. Majority, dominant left to right. If you think about it, you can go right, left, but it's like going it's strange, so Yeah, no, I mean yeah, yeah. I get it. It's like uh okay. So facial expressions on uh that's how uh and they always say you can tell mm. lies by facial expressions. I think that's it false. Ugh. Poker players used to abide by that, but that's a complete fallacy. Yeah. I'm not buying I need a baseline on somebody. If I met somebody for the fucking first five minutes I don't know their baseline. What can I fucking right. tell them? What do yeah. they know? Exactly. I mean, in the poker world, it's like I played oh. you a hundred times. I can read what you know, fucking what you got going on. Yeah, it's too quick to. Develop. I don't ever I, agree with that. The guy goes, "Yeah, he read him." Bullshit. There's no unless he blatantly did something where he said something that made like I'm bluffing or. Yeah. But other than that, no. And even interrogation, you, you can't bait off of a. People falter under pressure real quick, but whatever. Oh, people's memories are shit too these days, for sure. Yep, they're. Yeah, I I mean, we can go into more details on all that, but I think... I think we carpamentalized quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, I think we covered everything that I wanted to cover today. Just to recap the season, um... Not yet too long of an episode here. Gonna be going back through the episodes uh, for this season and then clipping them up. Then releasing those out just little by little. Start to uh, start to get in the, the the mode of like actually making some video content. I'm just about there. Like I said, I've been getting things like my wisdom teeth pulled, which had to be done because I can't can't gain the weight at the gym that I want to if I can't just eat and if I don't want to eat <laughs> like it's just it's not really possible to gain weight if you if you can't eat it in so that's uh had to get that done um we had to wrap this up this was like the season up this was probably one of the best times to do it just get some space between the foot actual football season ending and you know, about March Madness is about ready to finish up in a couple of weeks. We might do another cast to finish that up, or we'll see what's kind of next on our plates. But yeah, we'll see when the video content starts to uh, to roll in. I would imagine maybe sometime in uh, mid April, mid to end April, I might do a first video, which. I don't know. Might just be a rant at the fucking world. Like, yeah, here I am. Fuck what every one of you thinks. <laughs> like, yes, sir. It's, uh, it's... People will probably try to attack and probably try to contradict and try to poke holes. I fully expect all of that, and I've dealt with all of that before. So Critics! You're not going to have any chances of poking any holes. Critics! But even though critics, they may think critics, that they have a good critics. point because they'll say some shit like, well, you say you don't care what anybody thinks, but then you say how important it is that you're always aware of what everybody's thinking and feeling. It's like, yeah, well, when you get to where I am on, under, on understanding all of that, then you'll understand what I'm saying. But I'm not really going to be in a spot where you're just going to grill me about like, oh, you're contradicting yourself. I say I don't give a fuck what any of you think in regards to I don't have an ego to satisfy that really gives a fuck what you think. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's 
what I'm saying. Get him. I care enough about what you think to the point that we've put all this content out here to help you all add perspective to your thoughts. I can't control you to make you go do that. So, you know, again, do I care what everybody thinks? Yeah, I do. But on an egotistical standpoint, I don't give any fucks. So I kind of just want to... It's, it's kind of fun to go ranting on that and just fucking yell at everybody and how retarded they are and how nothing they think or say or do and yeah. can, can ever really affect me in any way and it's not going to fucking change anything I'm doing. So... It's what it is. It's really just a... I mean, it's one of those basic things you learn. I think most Buddhists can probably practice it pretty easily just re- removing the ego. Like, if there's no ego here for me to give a fuck about then all of you trying to make me give a fuck it really doesn't have any it doesn't have any uh, soil to take root in you mm-hmm. know so it just kind of goes out the window yep it gets filed as documented into you know and that's the other thing about like the collective consciousness and the unitary field it's like it, it's kind of like a database everything that you think is it gets recorded it's mm-hmm. like it's documented. Yeah. Like you can, they can just go right back and zoom to it and be like, "Remember at this moment, and this time, you were thinking this and feeling this." Fucking ten minutes later, you found out something that yeah. you were like, "Wow, I shouldn't have been so pissed off and fucking shot the neighbor's dog because it was dark barking." <laughs> Remember yeah. you telling shot me that fucking dog. story? Go oh, man, get him! I've warned him five times. Anyway. anyway, y'all, I can keep talking and bring you up. Up a subject, down the rabbit hole, back up through, cut to known fucking different tunnels and segue and got, topics, I, and they all fucking connect here and there. And you critics say we that that it. gonna say, well, that's not. I don't know how to explain how a critic won't respond, but listen, I uh, I put my disclaimer at the beginning, so you gonna get try to get fancy. That disclaimer is yeah, disclaimer. Like that. My thoughts, my You're thoughts try only. To get fancy. So let's yeah. just be real about that. World traveler likes to talk about experiences, have a background that's pretty unique. Brandon have a background that's very unique. We just go hand in hand, and that's what it is. So. Yep, all the way to Antarctica. Be yeah, that's it the is. last thing. Anybody about Antarctica? We want to know. We want to know what's going on. Yeah, let's go. Because. Nobody knows. Yeah. Well, even my notepad here was made in India. There you go, we man. We can't even make fucking notebooks. In I remember America. being in Thailand and seeing uh, Nike shirts for five US they dollars. Had to, they had to build a fucking boat to send this across the ocean. Yep, just and so they I hit the right on. Hit the Baltimore Pier and the you whole know, damn thing fell down. Fuck the fact that you can like a hemp, a wild hemp field you can use for biodiesel and the fucking field replants itself you can go back out there the next year the whole thing's fucking full of hemp again <laughs> it's like you don't even have to plant it like what the fuck is wrong with y'all that's one thing it's like when i'm saying like i'm fucking mad at society and kev's like just travel <laughs> i'm like yeah go man. fucking overseas into a location <laughs> where nobody speaks yeah, english like yes that is true but it's tell like, me right now this- i'm gonna give you a different fucking you would be like <laughs> where do i start it's like I, I I'm drive go down, to the like, bakery. down the thing and I see a fucking cornfield and I'm triggered, man. It's like that shouldn't even be there. Why are we growing corn and soybean? What the man, fuck for? When I spent uh, a few months in Desertville, I call it, where there's no where there's no fucking green at all, God, damn. like the desert of fucking I like different areas of the, just desert, fucking desert. It's a, it's a color you couldn't paint. Yeah, it's a weird desert, yellowish fucking color and then when um, I got on a flight and um, over the mountains going mountains 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 and then you get down and, and you get down and now you're like in Europe and you see green nothing but green yes. green is everywhere <laughs> and I landed and I'm like hugging a tree I'm looking for trees like he yes. was in the spiritual yeah. but I just want to say <laughs> it's so good to be back to the green green land and I'm not even in Greenland I'm in fucking Germany and that was like a different feeling. Like I was so pissed off at the fucking desert fucking bill yeah. that I'm like, this is, I don't know how people make it. <laughs> and I had like accessories to like pools and like cultural nice stuff in those areas and the keys to the kingdoms. And you know, like 
I was able to uh, see a side, and then when I would go to Germany, I'm like, and, but then when I get back to America, it's like, oh, it's so good to be back in O'Hara. I'm touching yeah. American soil. Fuck it. Y'all problems got fucking nothing on me. I got, I just saw some shit that you fucking would, you couldn't even, <laughs> like you couldn't comprehend. Right. But that's, that's what I, that's what I had uh, joined. And, um, I, you know, I, I had a great time. I mean, fuck. I'm never, I'm good. I'm, I'm seen. And now I'm like different at people. I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. Go find Antarctica. Let's just, yeah, let's all just get, <laughs> put Antarctica lost and we'll see who's real fucking, who's going to man up. Yeah. Hey, put the power out for 72 hours. See who your true neighbors are. Someone pull Who up. are your true contacts to get you out of this mess? Someone pull up MapQuest. Let's get to fucking. <laughs> yes. So that's what it is. I don't know anywhere else to explain it. Yeah. I always just, uh, but I got trapped into some sort of the part of the, the sheet mill of culture matrix that I got to either adapt to in situations or I can just like, all right, well, fuck it. I'm going to just continue to do what, do what I do. And keep doing what you do and you're going to keep getting what you're getting. That's, a, that's the meaning of life. Time freedom and fucking do whatever you want. That's a true ultimatum. No other way around it. And then when you get too old and then you want to go travel some countries, have fun. I have yeah. fun when you're 60. That's the thing. Dream. Fuck that. Everything's progressing 10 years. Fucking 35. Everybody's done. Four day work weeks. Fuck it. Make it three. <laughs> Fuck off. That's it. AI's taking over everything and nobody, I mean, what are you going to do? The cost of living is going to have to balance itself out because other than that, y'all have good luck. Yeah. Because yeah. I know where I'm going. Well, I know where I'm going. And there's only one other person that knows. And if they get interrogated, they will pull that secret out of that person. <laughs> and that's how, that's all I got. <laughs> that's where they, if you want to hide, that's, it's, it's inconvenience to go, but in the end, it'd be worth it. So yep. that's my take. Yup. And, uh, anybody that says, Hey, just, they want to go disappear in the mountains of Colorado. You know what? Good hey, luck. Good luck. You ain't disappearing. It's not disappearing. <laughs> You want to get away because you're not dis you're not disappearing. Right. Yeah, you I'm going. I would go. You're not good. You. I would rather be. Fuck all that, man. Like disappearing. <laughs> you, you, you're right. not. There's no vanishing. You. There's no more. No. No. No more. No more. No. They got you all recorded now. Yeah, it's like the guy said, and he fucking got in his car and left. They got I most can't of these. Fathom where he went. Bunch of them all microchipped up too, so it's like they're not gonna lose them. Yeah, yeah. and and babies all gonna be chipped. Oh man, man, uh, what a beautiful world we population got. control, this and that. And this is great. I'm actually excited for the future. We're headed in the right direction. <sighs> oh. Everybody's fucking like utopian minded. They, everybody loves each other. They would never do anything to to uh set to uh put the hole in jeopardy you know we would never do stuff like that that's what i love about this society so much yeah <laughs> it's like corruption free as corruption free can be it's like more pure than the pope the pope speaks the most languages apparently than anybody in the world okay looks like a fucking talk about reptilians man <laughs> Jesus. The dude, I mean, he looks like he stepped out of the Star Wars movie. <laughs> like, straight up sit. I mean, that's gotta be a fucking, like, they gotta be going for that. Like, there's no way that that's just, like, a visual coincidence. <laughs> they want, so? they certainly want us to be thinking that. I've seen too many fucking, like, pro, like, produced videos where they're like hour and a half like long videos about how you know we've been being lied to the whole time and the corruption in the world and it's yeah, yeah man. man i was gonna we'll have to talk just rabbit holes next everywhere. time about uh about uh when, when i went to basic training and what that was like for uh for me entering the government sector doing the Air Force and seeing how that was because back then it was a whole different game because I one of uh, his buddy's kids it went and joined to go to Air Force but he had to go to basic training down in Texas 
So when he graduates, I'm, I'm going to be going down there and just seeing how it's changed and how it's different. I've been to a couple since. But, That'd be but, pretty cool. Oh, yeah. But I got fucking stories that are just like, <laughs> man. That's the best part about this story is just that you showed up in, like, fucking t-shirt and shorts yeah. and, like, everybody <laughs> else all did that. I had a ball cap. Dude, I love U of that A ball of cap. And, like, and, the guy, <laughs> and, and the guy liked Arizona for some reason. He's like, oh, U of A. That's the best part. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> and you know what? I must have just had something that fit, and they just said, yep, yep. we don't give a fuck what you wear. Yeah, we just it. care about how you can handle Fit the situations. script. Can you keep a secret? Can you learn? Yeah. No, it's it's it said. The thing was, are you are you teachable and trainable? That's teachable the only two trainable. words that were questioned. Ready to roll? Let's go. And if you can answer yes to both those, then you're qualified. There's no secrets to, like, finding the right avenue. You have to find – they're going to – you have – you can't find, you have to put it out there to get found. Do you understand yeah, in the man. algorithms of the world? A lot of you people have are not either... teachable or trainable. What's that? A lot of teach a lot of te- people are not teachable or That's why or they trainable. get disqualified in any other, no Shit. different than going to apply for a police job. They might not, they just failed. That's why basic training in the military, all the gov- all the branches, that's what it's designed for is to weed out the, you know, 1% join, but they got to weed out the 10, uh, 40% that just, and then if you get into special forces and like Navy SEALs, I've hung out with guys like guys like those. They're fucking nuts, but they're fucking like yeah. different, different. Like yeah. you have to be around that. And yeah. then uh, like that, they weed them out. Makes sense. So yeah. that's how that works. You could fit a profile on a computer with a checkbox, but if you don't match the characteristics that let's say a sales position, you can use information sim purity in simple fashion, step by step. That's all I did. I checked the boxes. I said, what do I want to do? I want to do something for this. I want to do that. I want to travel the world. I checked the boxes and then that was it. And then I got reached out and they said, hey, that was it. It was no secret, no like, oh my God, I, you know. But yeah. the other thing is real quick, in, in, in three letter agencies, there's two different types. There's like the people that are working as janitors. There's people that are um, running a coffee shop in maybe those areas. There's people that are cafeteria workers. Think of all the people in the NFL stadium that are not there, they're paying partners. Think of people that run the organization. They can, you know, they have a, but they could just be like, hey, I, but then you got the covert, which is like the undercover. That's the people that are like, you would never know. And they would never say, hey, right. they, it, but, it's just uh, like Phil Jackson. Yeah, <laughs> coach. <Some> of, <laughs> he, 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 he pat, tries to pass himself as a Zen master when yeah. really he's been hypnotized and trained in the art of hypnotization. Yeah. So that's um, that's why Michael Jordan was so good because Phil was actually a hypnot a hypnotic master. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, I got a lot of stories though. <laughs> just like just. Fuck, man. <laughs> and, and going to University of Arizona was such an experience because it was, uh, it's another uh, Desertville fucking place unless you have a, uh, every yard was rocks. That was my yep. first taste of desert <laughs> life was Arizona. And it was 135 and there was no AC and I'm like, <laughs> fuck no this. I was ready to die. <laughs> I hated it. And, I, and that's when I went over, went out to East Coast. I said, man, I really love like Virginia. I love fucking the Washington fuck? D.C. I love Fort Meade, Maryland. I love this area. Yeah. But then I got like, yeah, my, that was the last time I had saw that. And then when I went over in in uh, in uh, overseas area and I saw the desert life, it reminded me of fucking Arizona, just like miserable, dry heat, yeah. like. Fuck this, and, indeed. But U of A back then was big on basketball, so I was a big sports. Uh, I really wanted to get into something with algorithm sports. Yeah. I didn't care what it was. Stock markets. Uh, but yeah, I put my name out to big corporations and just, hey, write, uh, write checkbox at the right time and write uh, <laughs> yeah. interview. Are you, are you trainable and uh, teachable? Yes, I am. Yes. All right. Looking, let's go. <laughs> ready to roll. Rolled and ready. <laughs> yes, sir. All right, y'all. Yes, sir. Y'all have a good one. Arigato gozaimasu for listening. And uh, yeah, that's what it is. Yep. Glad football's over and we just ramped on and up. Yeah. What it is. Wow, what a season. Yeah. Baylor Swift, nobody in the news. It's all dead. 
I'm excited to go through it and Flip pop like it out, footballs on its way. Flip it up, relive Jay. like being right about every fucking thing we said. You know that'll yep. be Jay, uh, that'll be nice. The uh, flag football, a lot of changes. We're gonna wait until the official changes because I really think they're really gonna make a lot of changes by yeah. August. So probably. I think no more football. Fuck nothing. No more sports. Nothing. Yep. There's nothing. Nothing. Uh, they're sh- they're shifting. They it's like shifted four gears. months of, of uh, bridges and built and the Baltimore. Oh, I mean, there's fuck, so much yeah. news, it's but, fucking criminy. But damn, perfect recipe to keep them all in psychosis, man. Just all hypnotized. Never don't think too much for too long. Well, I've been on that bridge multiple times. That's why it, it hit me, and I was like, man, because I was out east coast, living out in that area. I fuck that bridge was important. I mean, that would be equivalent to like taking out the interstate here, and you have to go all the way around, and the traffic has to flow in a fucking chaos. Yeah, what the? I mean, fuck? there's no way around that pier. It's really like, I mean, fucked it's up, fucked yeah. up, man. The way the thing fell, it just was went. Like, yeah, it's. It didn't it, even look like something hit it. It looked like something like it was. I don't know, dude. It did not act the way that I would have expected a bridge to act by getting hit. Like you know, I bet the other thing is I've been on I've been on bridges where if you're on the bridge and you have to make a left turn, I remember some of these piers and ports where you have to make like a left turn, but you're on the bridge to get around, but you're still on the like there's a whole bridge thing. But you would just sit there at the stoplight for like forty five seconds waiting for the turn, and on the bridge you could just feel it like swaying oh, based yeah. off of the traffic and. I'm just, it's its like you're on a little boat and I'm like, this motherfucker fucking falls in and it's right one of those big dividing points where it would just be like snap, oh, crack, and fucking man. fall. So I've been on bridges. That's one thing I was always terrified and it took me the fear to get over that on those bridges where I'd be sitting there and I'd just have to like count down to 45 and I'm like, we're fine. But then it would just, you didn't know the bridge. <laughs> it was Start like almost get seasick at times, Ooh. like full on panic mode. Yikes. I mean, I it was terrifying, that, and yeah. I can, that happened at such an odd time of the day where, um, I mean, it could have been it. way worse. That fucking, whoo. You just have to look around and be like, is anybody else freaking out? Not that I trust anybody else to be freaking out when they should be, but. Oh, bridges are scary, man. They fucking used to terrify me. I'd rather fly around the world twice than be on a bridge that's a mile, that's, fucking that's mile or less. Swaying, yeah, be that like, bridge, yeah, I got better Baltimore things bridge was a mile long. I'll go around. <laughs> so that thing, t- what's that it take to drive that, around that half hour? Did, yeah, <laughs> I'm in. If that thing, hit, that thing hit directly onto one of those uh, support structures and it just totally collapsed the whole damn thing. I think it, if, if it would have hit directly on, I don't know if I think it would have just more of like went through it. And like left behind like a dangling yeah. structure. Yeah, like, like it would have like started dragging it along with it. But he it. hit the one that just like But hit one domino. spot that made it like it, it domino on, on the other sides. sides. Yeah. Both sides. So it didn't make any fucking sense. It just put in Yeah. Yeah, the whole thing I that whole damn thing and it's almost you know, I've been and it's like, what the fuck? That could have well, and they're supposed to have like patrol out there that if that if a, something the ship I mean, loses power, eighty tons, like I don't they think can you push could it stop away. It. Eighty tons, and it, no, those things have to stop like thirty minutes out to pour it in. Yeah. You have to shut the shit down to like pour it in. To even like, yeah, how would it have even got there? Like, that's the thing. I it, guess it would be like almost slipping on ice in a car where you have no yeah. control hydraulics, and it just you end it hitting. I don't know on water like how directional. But I do know like this, this is an example, you're in the middle of a force and you have a compass, and if your compass is like a half a degree off and you've got a 40 minute stretch, you're gonna be off track by, I don't know, 400 yards, maybe left, maybe right. Same thing on probably the ship. I mean, that thing was fucking go, probably dead on to go somewhere and it was supposed to turn in, and that damn thing just got going and like, fuck it, we can't stop it. Kinda like the iceberg right ahead. They're just like, holy shit, yeah. man overboard. It, just, it had no power, somehow like it, no, managed to up. drift into yeah. the magical just, spot right, the where it made spot. the whole fucking the bridge whole thing, just though, collapse. The whole damn right? thing collapsed. And <laughs> and, I told and, some, and oh. Without even going through it, just just running into it is that all. Thing 80 because tons. that fucking stopped 80 it. 80 tons. Like, the bridge probably weighs more than 80 tons. But that thing was just <laughs> went right through the damn thing and then... Fucking crazy. 
Yeah, I, I what a mess. What yeah. a mess. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, fucking A, I don't want to hear about it anymore. Yeah, it's a tragedy, and um, I'm just, and, you know, fuck. No. Imagine being if that would a rush hour, and all of a sudden, you, like, people would be getting out of their car like, hey, the fucking shit's coming, and we got, like, to run a half a mile. You're in the middle of the bridge, and a fucking bridge. You have to run a half a mile in, in two minutes to, to reach full-on like- sprint. Without trembling, and then if you jump over that bridge, you're gonna die because the body will sh- the sh- it will shatter you because it's a pretty deep jump. You know now, if you're weird. a trained diver, a trained jumper, you could fall the correct way. You might you might shatter yeah. something, but if you're normal, you're panicking. You're fucking done. You belly flop, dude. You're just yeah, so you're shattering your So if you want cage. to view Fuck. something terrifying like that, that would have been an instance where it's like, holy shit, the ship's coming, and it, it's it's calling Mayday. We have nowhere to go but run. But by the time you're you're fucking, you're like I don't know how much I'd be like it'd be a test on that, like adrenaline. Like how much can somebody run a hundred yard dash and full on adrenaline in like six seconds if they're really like not these are trained runners, but full on like aggressively, like got to get the fuck out of there. I don't know, man. That's the only thing. It that's kind of four a.m. or didn't. Well, that's also as weird. It's like how where were all the deaths of like where's all the cars like falling into the where's all the cars being recovered? Like was there just they said there was a construction crew? Okay, well, so where's like did they fucking fish out? Well, they were the doing like shift change or something like, at the time. Like some said, of them were working and like their cars were parked. And they're like, hey, the ship's coming, and they had to go like save their car. But then by then it was too late because. I don't know. They well, yeah, the whole bridge fucking fell just down. Just collapsed. And, yeah, it's in like a matter of, a, like, a like, matter of a, the... like 14, 15 seconds, just gone. Yeah, you ain't getting weird. out of that mess. Even like I said, if you jumped, you're fucking, you're gonna, you're dead. Like you, you, maybe you could have jumped on the ship. Yeah, that would have been your best bet. Is the ship's coming in? I'm jumping on the highest port. I'm getting on that ship. And I ain't stopping it, but I ain't going down and fucking like, this and way. Yet yeah, we don't hear any stories. Like, like nobody jumped on the ship. Like Maybe the workers six, were six people were middle. missing or something. And it's like now, if if a if, a, if a car had, if your car goes diving into water like that, that makes sense. Does, can you open the door to get out? Are you trapped in there? Can, like, are you gonna break the window? I don't are you, know. Like, how fast does it sink? I would be like, how do you opening the door would be kind of hard. Yeah, like to like get you, even open the be a door. Lot of pressure. And the windows obviously are electric. So in kicking the window out, you, you right. can't kick a window out. You, kick you would window. kick after six tries and not get you would try to bang it and then it wouldn't break. And then even if it broke, you would make maybe fucking yeah. cut and broke your uh, Achilles tendon. Yeah. And then next yeah. thing you know you're in, and now you're fucking on the the first surface of water and you're bleeding. Right, right. I'm like, there's no good way out of that. The only is if you uh, maybe had something where you could crawl. I mean, you'd hope the windows break. I mean, even then, the pressure isn't enough to you would get yeah. you you would when it crashes down. If it falls, I don't know, man. They don't want to report on that, like you said. So I don't know what uh, much more to think besides. Hey, I've been on the bridge and it's like even the bridge of Minneapolis when that damn thing went down on Seventh Avenue. I mean, I've been on that bridge multiple times when I was, you know, going to see the twins play, and that thing fell down, and same type of shit. I mean... I mean, maybe, like, they saw... They fall on concrete. There was no fucking water. They didn't fall very far. It was like a normal bridge. A little 20-foot uh, gap. Maybe they saw the big thing there, and they were like, fuck that. That 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 ship's way too close to the bridge. I'm not going to travel on the bridge. Oh, they just... I would, I would try knows? to figure out a way to jump... On that ship, hanging on something, even if I fell and broke my leg, or I'm still, yeah. or even if I fuck, I, I'm it's better than falling into the water and being knocked unconscious. Oh, you're, you're panic mode, though. You got to look at the panic mode. Like, what's my situational awareness here? Right. I don't know. I got two options, and it ain't looking good. The ship's probably <laughs> surviving, the bridge is probably not. <laughs> but even if it didn't work for the Titanic, you know, that ship, 80,000 tons, if that thing would have cracked in half. I mean, I don't know how deep that 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 deep. It's pretty deep out there. There's there's a bro. There's uh, deep below some of these bridge structures on the West Coast, LA area that build these big fuck down below. These divers, trained divers, go way down there. Fucking yeah. uh, architect, like trained divers. I know it's NASA type life. shit underwater, and there's catfish the size of humans fucking swimming down in this deep. Parts of these, Holy yeah. shit. 
There's fucking catfish that are the size of humans. Wow. These guys are down there doing their thing, and they're just like, they aren't going to harm you, but they're just like, fucking. Jeez. So that's one of those hidden, like, under the water that, imagine what's in the ocean. This is just normal yeah, water shit. Massive shit. Those catfish be eating something underneath the water. I don't know what the, know, the right? trash goes underneath there. If it gets biodegraded into like <laughs> fucking cat, fucking they're eating fish, the plastic water. Or, but they're <laughs> eating something. Yeah. So, yeah, man, what an exciting uh, yeah. world. What an exciting world. It's so great to live in America. I like how we, end, like how we ended with like human-sized catfish. Yeah, that's fantastic. Yes, sir. I should look that up and see what the, there's. They're out there. So, hey, get a job doing that. That fucking pay a quarter of a million. <laughs> If not more, oh, fuck that God. job, man. Yeah. Fuck that engineering job. No fuck. No thank you. Yeah. All right, y'all. Yep. I'm tired. It's been a minute. All right. We'll see you with the next one. Kampai. Fuck me, man. I still can't believe it's NFL season. All right. All right. See y'all. Hey.